What better way to kick off 2019 than with one of the biggest races on the calendar? The culmination of five months of toil, it's the Super League Triathlon Grand Final. New races, new formats, new venues, but the same old rivalries. After clashes across the Northern Hemisphere, we head south to the equator and to Singapore. Double the points, double the pressure. It is time to crown our champion. Super League Triathlon, not just quick, the fastest ever seen, not just hard, the sport's toughest test, not just good to watch, absolutely gripping. Three brutal rounds across Europe have led us here, to Singapore, to the grand final and a pot of gold at the end worth 1.5 million US dollars. It all began in Jersey, in the English Channel, and Ireland turned French for one weekend. Future superstar Cassandra Bogran announced her arrival with an opening win, forcing American world number two Katie Zafiris to up her game on the Sunday, and she did. In the men's, more French flair, another world number two, Vincent Lewis, giving us a first taste of his domination. Round two, a crazy uphill finish in Malta. Zafiris fighting to reach the summit first on Saturday, while multiple duathlon world champ Richard Murray of South Africa found form as well, but not enough to stop Lewis's amazing kick and perfect points run. Two rounds and two wins for Zafiris and Lewis, who held off another South African, Henry Schumann. The Commonwealth champ getting his revenge the following weekend on the island of Majorca. A Saturday win, but again, Lewis doing his best work on Sunday, using his short shoot to hold off Olympic silver medalist Johnny Brownlee in one of the great finishes. Vincent Lewis, 75 from 75, one round to go with double points on offer. 50 in Singapore, it's still anyone's game. In the women's, despite a Saturday win, Zafiris' final round wasn't quite so comfortable. Instead, it was resurgent fellow American Taylor Spivey who mastered Majorca. With that, Spivey climbs to four, still in with a shot at the top prize, 100,000 US dollars and the title of Super League Triathlon Champion. What a journey it has been. An absolutely fantastic debut season of Super League Triathlon from Jersey to Malta to Majorca and now to beautiful Sentosa Cove right on the equator. One degree north, incredibly hot and humid conditions and a big test for all our athletes across the course of the grand final weekend. My name is Will McCloy. Alongside me, the founder of Super League Triathlon, Chris McCormack, and a man who's never lost the Eliminator, the men's Eliminator coming up, no pressure to put on you, uh, Richard Murray. That's coming up later, but it's the women's Eliminator we're going to talk about right now. First of all, Rich, I'll start with you. Just to get your perspective on what it's like racing Super League Triathlon versus racing other triathlon. You've done plenty of World Cups, WTS racing, all different types of formats. What's this one like? You know, it's a, it's a big difference compared to the usual racing that we usually do. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely, you know, full on from the start. Small mistakes can become big mistakes. And uh, you've got to be on the game from the get-go to, you know, to try and reap the benefits from this type of racing. Ah, but then hopefully some other people make small mistakes and then you can reap the benefits on them. Yeah, you know, everyone makes mistakes here. It just depends on how big they are, really. But, uh, yeah, definitely, you know, you've got to be on, on point from the start. Maka, uh, talk to me about Super League, when you came up with it, when the idea was, was formed. I mean, what's the philosophy of it? And if people are used to swim, bike, run, and they've seen triathlon before, this is very different. Well, I think that the core philosophy was testing an athlete's ability to do swim, bike, run. Why does it have to always be in that order, which is what standard triathlon was all about? So... We mixed everything up. We, we changed the formats. We brought some interesting formats in. We made the athletes race over multiple days in different ways. And uh, we were shocked with the results. I think the feedback from the professionals has been remarkable. They said it's some of the toughest racing they've ever done. And we're able to bring triathlon to venues such as this in Singapore and Sentosa, which triathlon would never be able to come to places like this other than Super League. Swim, bike, run, that's what it's all about. But the Eliminator, the women coming up very soon. It's like swim, bike, run, Hunger Games. Uh, you cannot afford to make any problems whatsoever and Richard your lovely fiance Rachel Clammer is, is sitting there in third position with Taylor Spivey right behind her and all eyes on Katie Zafiris how's her headspace and does she cope well in these conditions 
Um, yeah, she thrives in these type of conditions. Uh, hopefully she can't hear me now, but uh, definitely, you know, she loves the hot conditions. Uh, she's from Holland, well, from the Netherlands, but she spent plenty of time in South Africa, and we just came here from Cape Town, so definitely acclimatized to this type of condition. All right, let's have a look at the standings uh, as they are. We mentioned that Katie Zafiris has a commanding lead. She's on 71 championship points. Kirsten Casper, fellow American, she's not here. So Rachel Clam, we spoke about, Taylor Spiver, the other American, are uh, in with a shot because we have double points across this weekend. So 50 championship points are on offer, and this is how it shakes out. Zafira 71, Rachel Clammer 40, and Spivey 38. If Katie Zafiris finishes in the top seven this weekend, she will be the champion. If she doesn't, if she has any small error, it will be capitalised on by Clammer and Spivey have a chance of winning. And of course, there is form all the way through this field as well. It's a very, very tight course. Anything can happen, but Katie Zafiris knows it's all on her shoulders and her mental game is very strong at the moment. I am Katie Zafiris. Coming into this last race, um, I'm really focused on making sure that my mind is in the same place as what it has been. I'm focused much more on my goals throughout the race than I am um, about taking the win or winning the whole series, even though that's obviously on my mind, it's not really my focus. Super League Triathlon can be really trying in the mental side of things, especially with the triple mix. The triple mix. Get ready, because this one hurts. The mental part of it is challenging for me. A time where I really had to dig deep the mental side of things was in Malta. Uh, we were coming up the final hill, and I was with Summer Rappaport and Kirsten Casper. And I remember in my head distinctly saying, Katie, you want this, like you need to go. And I motored up the hill. For me, the physical aspect usually comes pretty easy, but the mental aspect is something I really work on. And I think this last year, I've just learned a lot about how to get the most out of myself. And also when there's nervousness or anxieties, that that's normal for me. That's not something that freaks me out. It's something that says, Katie, you're ready to race. It doesn't make you weak to have to work on your mind and it takes as much training. And here is Zafiris at the back. Oh, oh Zafiris. Is Zafiris, is down. Zafiris is down. Yeah, there, there's certainly times though where it, it's not easy, it doesn't feel fun, it, and it doesn't feel exciting. I think the biggest thing for me is knowing that those times will pass. I think I do a lot of self-talk of just, I am strong, I am strong, I am strong, or I segment things. I really like breaking down the races. With Super League, these courses are really tiny, but you'll, you'll see me doing the 1K loop on the bike or on the run so many different times so that I, I know exactly every single turn. Katie Zafiris, what an effort from her. I think when I'm on the podium, I'm just really proud that I did it again at this point. Um, but I also feel like every time on, on the podium, there's unfinished business. Like in Mallorca, where I was second, I was frustrated and I wanted to be on the top. <laughs> to win Super League for the second year in a row would just be really amazing and it would be a reflection of that I'm headed the right direction. Just showing that I can, I can do it no matter, no matter what, basically. <laughs> I am strong, I am strong. There is Katie Zafiris in the water. That's her mantra. Mine personally is don't mess it up. I'm thinking it right now. Rich, I'm interested to get your thoughts. What do you think about over and over when you're in the water, when you're running? What's your mantra? Yeah, I mean, I just try and uh, do everything the best that I can. And I always realize that at some point it's really going to hurt. But that, that, that point will disappear quite shortly. So I always just think it will go away eventually, is what I think. It will go away eventually. This will all be over soon. All right, thank you for that very much. Go and uh, warm up. Although, although with this weather, you don't need to warm up too much. Get yourself ready. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Thank you very much. Looking forward to it. All right, there you go. The Eliminator is coming up under 10 minutes now until the women take to the course. This is what the Eliminator is all about. The Eliminator, the most ruthless triathlon format ever devised. A three-stage tactical nightmare rewarding fierce racing and strategic brilliance. Pace your efforts, conserve energy and avoid elimination. No room for positioning error, no room for weaknesses, no room for anything. Stage one, mass start, swim, bike, run, easy. A win here though won't help you but finish outside the top 15, that's your day over.
for the rest? There is no rest. A 10 minute break and we go again. Mass start, swim, bike, run. Finish top 10 and progress. The other five join their fallen rivals on the sideline. 10 minutes, recover, reset. It's time to go into battle for the last time. How much have you got left? Because someone will cross the line a winner. The Eliminator, it's time. Swim, bike, run, and the first 15 go through. That means eight go home after the first stage. A 10 minute break and we go again. Swim, bike, run, and then the top 10 head through to stage three. So it's just about qualifying through the first two stages and all on the line in the final stage. Well, I tell you what, this really is an idyllic and beautiful location for a triathlon. But it is hot, 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 including the water temperature, 29 degrees. The athletes normally will be standing around, a lot preferring to stay in the water, 35 degrees out here. Just sitting here, done her warm-up, is our series leader, Katie Safiris. Katie, we've had a good look at uh, your video there. You've done a lot of work, mental work, in the off-season to prepare you for this final race. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's always the mental game of sport is always just as much as the physical, and uh, I'm definitely feeling the nerves for this first race, so practicing my acceptance of it, and yeah, I'm, I know I'm ready. How does it make you feel when the locals say this is extremely hot, even by Singapore standards? You're racing at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> It, it comforts me a little bit, um, but also I, I prepared for it to be hot and humid. It's nice to know that at least it's not a surprise. <laughs> okay, so biggest threat today, I guess we've got to be looking at your fellow teammate, right, Tyler? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know because it's the first race of the season for everyone. Everyone's fresh and ready to go, so uh, I don't have anyone focused just so I won't be surprised if someone else is there. Okay, well, good luck, Katie. Well... <laughs> I tell you what, there's ferocious competition here, but I think the biggest battle for the athletes today is sure to be the heat. Fantastic shots from above Sentosa Cove. It is a beautiful and hot and humid day here in Singapore, as so many of them are. It is fantastic conditions for this one. We'll talk a lot about the heat and humidity. Chris McCormack joins me in commentary right now, but there is so much on the line. 40% of the competition points for the season are on the line here in the grand final. And Katie Zafiris, number 16, is the one they are all chasing. Summer Cook now is Summer Rappaport, got married across the course of the Christmas break. She will be, she's in sixth position. She'll be one to look out for as well. Look out for Danielle DeFrancesco, the Aussie in the water. Number four, Taylor Spivey, and number 84, Ashley Gentle, along with Cassandra Beaugrand, the French woman. She missed Malta and Mallorca. She is back with a vengeance, as is Lucy Hall, who's battled some sickness issues over the last 18 months, but she is back number 97 as well. And there's a lot of Asian athletes as well who are used to racing Macca in these conditions, and that will be key. Oh, without question. This is my hometown in Singapore, and it is really a hot day today. Katie Safaris, I saw her warming up, talking about the heat. I think she is still the woman to beat. Today. Absolutely, 71 points. Kirsten Casper is not here. She's got a little niggle. She misses out. $50,000 on the line for second place, so she'll be keenly watching how Rachel Clammer and Taylor Spivey do. There are a few more missing from that list, and it's all important, the top 10, because 10 contracts are on the line for season 2019 and 20. The course map, it is 150 metres out, and then back an easy swim, 29 degrees the water. Five laps on the bike, it's a 900 metre course, that chicane at the bottom of your screen, that is where we're going to see some skillful biking and perhaps not as well. The run course is exactly the same, the finish at the top of your screen before two hard left turns and back into transition as well. The coloured jerseys, you'll see that on the course uh, over the next hour or two. Katie Zafiris is in the pink because she's the season leader. The swim splits, bike splits, uh, uh, the blue and green Emma Jeffcoat and Rachel Clammer the fastest in Majorca. The red's not there because Kirsten Casper owned that one. And here we go, Longhoy from Macau, closest to you in slot number 23. And we are going to get underway in the women's eliminator. Here we go, Taylor Spivey closest to you. look good and we've got a clean start I think 150 meters out in this warm warm water there's no respite getting in there absolutely 
and already there's a couple of athletes who are streaking out and a few at the back there who are struggling with a lot of chop. It's a straight line to the first can and I, I saw the girls were warming up and I saw that far left side, you're seeing that now after the start, seemed to be the quickest direction out. They tended to bunch as they come off the swim start to sort of move left. The current is running from the from the right of screen across to the left side and you're seing that push along and I think is that Cassandra Bogart, I may get this wrong, from the aerial shot off the front, she looked to be doing a lot of warming up in the pool. Yeah, tough to see off the drone but already someone is well out in front there and a, uh, a solid swim very important because this bike course very very hard to negotiate at the best of times let alone with the best triathletes in the world all around you not a lot of places to pass so good positioning out of the water will be incredibly important and it's called the eliminator for a reason 23 athletes out there at the moment one swim bike and run and then eight of them their day will be done. The top 15 will go through after a 10 minute break to stage two, swim, bike, run again after only 10 minutes recovery. And then the top 10 will go through to stage three. So we'll lose five in stage two. And then it is a top 10 shootout, swim, bike and run for all the Saturday points. I think you're right. I think that is Cassandra Beaugrin. It's hard to see, we can't see her number, but that certainly looks like the French woman who's come back after missing a couple of rounds. She definitely announced herself though in Jersey, fantastic. It is, and it's Daniela De Francesco there on the outside. I thought that looked like Emma Jeffco, but she wasn't using the blue jersey, Emma, today. But uh, it would get very, very congested. It's a very tight turn. These two swim boys are only about 10 or 15 metres apart. So we wanted to give them a, a clean run to the first swim boys to keep this group together. And now it'll start to open up. The water temperature very, very warm, and this is when you'll start to really notice it. Absolutely right. I saw Spivey there in fourth position just hanging back and staying on the feet of De Francesco and I think perhaps Jeff Coat as well. Both those Australian women superb in the water. Jeff Coat from a surf life saving background. Lucy Hall's also here from Great Britain, a magnificent swimmer. It's her first shot since last year at Super League Racing. She seems to be in very, very good form. The swim is where she will shine. I saw her on the bike this morning a little bit nervous, but she wants to push up near the front because uh, getting around on this bike course is very, very similar to that Monaco Formula One. For those that, that follow car racing, it's very difficult to pass. Jeff Coat on the heels of Cassandra Beaugrin and Danielle DeFrancesco hanging off Jeff Coat's hip. Spivey behind them and a little gap back to fifth, so stringing out somewhat. It's, a, it's an early statement by Cassandra Beaugrand to be to be swimming off the front straight from the gun. She's uh, very, very committed to today. She knows there's a lot on the line. She's sitting just on that 10th position with a contract up. She missed the last two events, so uh, she was so dominant in Jersey, and uh, now she seems very keen to, to make a statement today. Fantastic 2018. Of course, that's all behind us now, but she's the French sprint champion. She won WTS Hamburg, that was a big breakthrough on the World Triathlon Series and she's part of the Mixed Team Relay World Championship French team. She's part of this French Fab Five we have here uh, racing over the weekend. We have uh, a very, very French, strong French contingent that are all eager to be very competitive here. A few of them are off to Bali after this event and one of the qualification races we have. So they've seen the, the benefits of racing, Super League racing for their Olympic aspirations. Absolutely, of course, the Olympics are a sprint and the mixed team relay and out of the water first. Cassandra Bogram followed by Emma Jeffco, Danielle DeFrancesco, Taylor Spivey, Rachel Clammer is there as well. Summer Rappaport. There's Chris, there's there is Katie Zafiris in the pink. She just went past. Aaron Story. The white jerseys as well are our young athletes. So anyone under 21 and out of the water at the end is Claudia Seabock of Hungary. So, eighth position for our championship leader at the moment. She won't be overly happy with that, but Kani Zafira is still certainly in touch. Yuko Takahashi of Japan in 14th. Hilda Choi and Long Hoi from Macau in 20th. Elena Danilova and Ashley Gentle had a very tough swim there. She's yeah. back in 22nd position. She was, very, gentle. she was very, very nervous going into this swim. I saw her at the athlete briefing talking about where the timing match. She's worried about tomorrow's elimination race, but... Uh, to be nervous prior to a race about your swim sort of makes a statement. It's, it's, it's early season for her. She made a statement that she uh, she wasn't 100% ready for this event, but a lot's on the line for her. She needs to she needs to get in this top 10 to get a contract. Nearly seven to eight seconds gap between That's our huge. top three, Jeff Coat, Bo Grant, and De Francesco, who's hanging off the back and trying to bridge that is Taylor Spivey. There she is with the American flag. Rachel Clammer and Katie Zafiris make up our top eight. Laura Lindemann right on Katie Zafiris' wheel. Here's there the, is chicane. the chicane. It's tough to get around there, and if you just push it a little bit wide, you can lose some time, and Jeff Coat was the best through there. 
She so looks, the gap widening actually. Wow. She looks very, very strong, Emma. I, I spent some time with her yesterday. She looks to be in magnificent condition. She's been training in New Zealand, which is a, a new training ground for her. She looks to be really, really fit. I spent some time with a mother who said she's over here to, to support her from Australia. And she said, look for my daughter. I think she's going to be right up near the front. Ashley Jenner looking to move up through the field there, but she's got a lot of work to do. Don't forget, they're all playing for 1.5 million US dollars. The winner of the championship will take home 100,000 US. The winner of the round, 20,000 US. So big prizes on the line. And as we head in towards the end of the opening lap, the gap, the gap is widening. And is it Cassandra letting the gap go there? I think. Remember so a little bit. Yes. The two Australians leading. Once they get themselves into position to keep them, to shut everybody out, they just need to coast through and recover between these stages. It's, it's the winner of stage three that wins today's race, but you must survive the elimination. That's the whole key to the eliminator format. So nursing yourself through these races to be in the best condition for race three. Yeah, absolutely no need to win stage one other than the, the mental boost, I suppose. It's about finishing 15th if you can and then finishing 10th and then finishing first. But right now, Emma Jeffco, a qualifier in Poznan in our Poznan qualifier last year, is now leading the women's eliminator. So what a journey. She's had a great 2018 two World Cup wins in Malulaba, Chengdu as well. The Oceania Sprint Tri Champs in February last year, but that was 12 months ago now. Back in Jersey, she crashed in the Eliminator in the wet too, so it's actually gentle. Very good. Way back. Yeah. Summer Rappaport was a bit further back than she'd like to be. She can. Both of those women can rely on their run legs to run themselves into into the next stage, but. If this happens in, in stage three, you're shut out very, very quickly. With less women on the course, the gaps start to open up and, uh, and, and the front group gets further and further away. Ten minutes is not a long time to recover, especially in these conditions. So if you can get out front in the top five and just coast your way into the 15, rather than have to spend some energy late on to sneak your way in, that's certainly going to help you as you come into stage two. But at the moment, it's Danielle Di Francesco. I do, yeah, I do think these two women ha have a distinct advantage. I think it's good to get out in front. There's a, it's a very, very tight circuit. You can, uh, you can watch your lines through the corner. You can stay safe. You don't have to overexert. You're out of the rush and congestion of, of the group who are starting to question whether they're going to run through to the second stage. So I think it's a good move by Emma and Daniela to get off the front. There is Summer Rappaport Ashley and Gentle. Ashley Gentle on the back of that pack, led by Katie Zafiris, and some hard work being done by some of the local Asian athletes in the, the backpack at the moment coming around once again Emma Jeffco takes the lead and they're extending their lead might pay to have a look back and just see the pace of the rest of the field Sandra Bogrand, she's got the biggest run on the field I think so she can be quite relaxed in stage one but still it's nice to nurse yourself through the bike courses where you're going to do the damage this is very very technical the, the television doesn't do it justice the chicane at the far end of this bike course i saw a lot of the men and women going through that time and time again to get that that run through as smooth as they possibly could ashley general now moving up from 22nd position to ninth charlotte mcshane in 11th summer rapperport hilda Choi, clara dawner and claudia seabox moved up through the field as well hoy long Elena Danilova, Desiree Ryden of the Canadian, and our top 20 rounded out by our sole Mexican athlete, Vanessa De La Torre, who will be starting to get just a little bit nervous as we are on lap three of the bike. Three Americans there. Yuko Takahashi, who's wearing the, the silver jersey of the fastest in transition, which is a, it's an amazing jersey to have. It's an accumulation of all your transition times, and Yuko Takahashi, the, the Asian Games champion from Japan, was the fastest, which is a big statement now coming into to this Olympic cycle. Emma Jeffcoat on your screen in the blue means she has the fastest swim splits from Mallorca and behind her, the 24-year-old Danielle Di Francesco trains on the Gold Coast. Fantastic swimmer in her own right as well, went out of the water. Noosa try a couple of years What's ago and we've crash. had a problem as Di Francesco. Yes. She's not rushing either. She's got a little bit of an issue with the handlebars and that hurts. Or Emma Jeffcoat Trying to get around, like a picture of that one. We'll hope, we'll, hopefully we'll get a replay, but right now Emma Jeffcoat's out the front all by herself with literally no one anywhere near her. So let's hope there wasn't a clash between the two of them. But Danielle Di Francesco, just as we're talking how, up how good she has been going. Hilda Choi leading a group of at the back of the pack, and these athletes are on the bubble and starting to worry about scraping into that top 15.
the pace will start to heat up around that 10th place to 17th place mark. Emma Jeffcoat now 14 seconds clear. Zephyrus knows she has to stay out of trouble. She's in third. Laura Lindemann, who joins us again after Jersey 2017, where she had two accidents. 22-year-old German sprint champ last year. Jeff looks magnificent. She, she, she really loves does. to be off the front. She's the true front runner. She's got such a big swim. She's technically very, very good on the bike. She's super strong. If anything lets her down, it's a run. But she looks to be so focused. I, I saw her in Malta and Mallorca in the last two rounds. Her, her head didn't seem to be there. But definitely this weekend, she's a lot more focused than she possibly has been in the past. And this is the best position for her. She just loves being in this spot. She certainly looks like she has been training very hard across the course of the last couple of months. Sort of a margin. Have a look at the big screen on the way past, see if anyone's behind her. Look at that gap. It's a nice margin of error. There's crashes happen behind. There's probably some tentative athletes back there. She can see. Oh, Ooh. that was very, very close. That just shows you how easy it is. No need to push it. And she just came in a little bit hot. And that will wake her up, certainly, if she started to cruise a little bit. Yeah, all the bikes. Zafiris leading a pack of quality athletes behind. There is Ashley General, Charlotte McShane. And Summer Rappaport, number 99, sixth overall, as it stands in our championship. There's 10, there's 11 with, with Emma off the front, 11. So at the moment, they're all safe. They're safe for stage two. If this stays together after the run, it's still very, very hot. It's what's going to happen between these stages that's going to be critical. It's uh, nurse, nursing yourself through the actual racing, but getting through the recovery between these races, it's key. Right, the train led by Katie Zafiris. Yet to get an update on where we are with Danielle DiFrancesco. We'll get our timing updated and we'll find out whether she's still in this one. She has to finish top 15 to run through to stage two. Jeff Coat, wow. round turn two. And coming up to the chicane once again on the W Hotel side of this beautiful Sentosa Cove. You can see the heat. You can see the sweat all over Emma. The heat out there, it's brutal. We're in the shade here. It's got to be 35. It is. You're shade. sweating profusely here in the commentary position. It's very uncomfortable for both of us. Around the back, she'll come off the tiles now. She's on the tarmac again. There's two or three changes of surface, which make things a little tricky, we've already seen. Ashley Jennings put herself in that group. Very slow through the chicanes. Ah, they're very tentative, and why not? Already seen one, one Australian come to grief and another one nearly do the same thing. But there is a group that are all safe in the top 15 at this point. We'll have to go back and see who is from 12th onwards as we come through timing once again. But right now it's all about Emma Jeffcoat who can really measure her efforts as she comes into transition on this run. She's got plenty of time and she would be smart to finish just at the head of the rest of the chasing pack. She's off the bike now. She's got a great margin of error. She'll be able to cruise and relax this run. She knows there's only 10 girls behind her, 15 go through the stage two. There's $1,000 up for winning the stage, so she's probably got... It's a great shopping place, Singapore. <laughs> she, <laughs> Emma loves a good shop. And uh, Well, if you're in this position right now, 1000 bucks would be very handy. Yeah. And she's out. Great transition. Great transition. A smile as well. Rachel Klammer leads in the pack. Zafiris, Laura Lindemann, Yuko Takahashi, Leonie Perio, Ash Gentle there as well. Rachel Klammer, very quick. That number one position, number 20, yeah, number one closest to that as they come around that turn is a, a distinct advantage if you get into transition first. Yuko Takahashi out first. That was a very quick transition. That's why she has the, we'll call it silver, but yes. you know it's grey. The jersey, but we'll call it silver. The only Perio comes out behind Takahashi, and these athletes really are on the bubble. The three Lucy pulls us down. So McShane, Spivey, and Rappaport all within 30 seconds of our leaders, and then it's back to Lucy Hall on 36. Daniela Di Francesco is in about 17th position, it looked like. That hurts. Let's hope she can make it through to the next round. Hilda Choi, 37 seconds back. Danilova and Desiree Reidner. So, Hoi Long, Claudia Seabock are looking like they could miss out. Three seconds back from Reidner. Aaron Story, Di Francesco now dropped about 10 seconds behind the bubble in 19th. And Clara Dorner, 55 seconds back. So, we could be waving goodbye to a host of athletes. Well, we will be. Those names at the bottom of your screen need to make it into the top 15. But right now, Emma Jeffcoat needs to jog at home for a little under.
under two kilometres. A 900 metre course, two laps. We've got the motorbike now on the run course, which is nice. We actually removed the motorbike for the, for the bike course, primarily because it couldn't keep up with the athletes. So we get that nice view now of the nice running technique of Emma Jeff. She looks very, very relaxed. She's done a lot of shoulder. work. You can tell that she's done a lot of work. She looks light on her feet. Obviously, it's a long weekend, but so she's done a lot of work on her run. And there's the best runner that there is in triathlon, perhaps, Cassandra Bobarn leading Laura Lindemann, Ash Gentle, who we know how good a run she has as well. And Yuko Takahashi in the silver, the silver bullet, number 27. Around the back of the course now with some Bit of shade. very handy shade, I was yes. going to say, yep, and just as she comes into the full sunlight. This is a nice performance by Emma. She'll be very, very happy with the way it, out, it played out. She had a great swim start. She set it up with the bike. She lost, there's Daniela Di Francesco there. She lost her, her partner off the front and uh, was able to set it up on the bike and cruise the run. I don't think if she could, if she could have wished for anything, I think that would have been the, the perfect race for her and she's uh, she's delivered it. She doesn't look to have an injury that's visible, but we'll see at the end of this stage whether she pulls up okay, Danielle Di Francesco, and we'll get an update, hopefully, from Annie Emerson. But speaking of doing it easily, Cassandra Beaugrand is such a fantastic runner and there's her French teammate, another member of the Fab Five, Leone Perio. These two have been inseparable over the course of the week. They're world champions together as part of the Mixed Relay team for France. They are the favourites going into Tokyo to win that Mixed Relay gold medal. They're using Super League racing to really hone those skills to prep up that. And these conditions here are, are very, very similar to what they're going to face in Tokyo. It's going to be hot, humid, very, very warm conditions. And they're just remarkable at this short, dynamic racing. Well, if they're looking forward to getting back in the water at the start of stage two, it's not going to help them in terms of cooling down. It remains 29 degrees in the water, just three below the ambient air temperature of 32. Emma Jeffco comes in to cross the finishing line. She'll have one lap to go. One Two lap, lap left. She looks very controlled. She gets a look there as well at exactly how much of a gap she does have as she comes around the tight turn and training job for Beaugrand and Perio ahead of Rachel Palmer there in the green. Both looking extremely comfortable. Controlling your efforts key and sometimes you feel so fresh because it's only stage one. You, 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 there's been a lot of tension building up to, the, to this weekend's racing. You get out there, you run the legs out, you feel so comfortable. But the, the key is to really, really hold back, and that can be difficult to do when you're so used to racing. In this eliminator format, only stage three matters. Whoever wins stage three, you can scrape through stage one, stage two. You win stage three, you win the day's racing. Well, Danielle Francesco has certainly learnt that lesson. She could have backed it off a little bit, and she just tipped herself over the line. Two fans look very, very comfortable. They do indeed. Rachel Plammer in fourth position ahead of Laura Lindemann. And that's where she'd like to keep Katie Safari's all week, I think. If she can keep her behind her, she's still a shot to win the overall. One I, the I just there. wonder where Taylor Spivey is. Ashley Gentle there running on her own. Did well to fight her way back from a, a difficult swim coming out in 22nd position. Smart racing by Ashley Gentle. She's really switched off. She knows how this plays out. And I've got a feeling Taylor Spivey would be talking to her boyfriend, Vince Louie. And he would have said, let's nurse her. So if you saw her just coming to screen at the back there, she had a glance over her shoulder. She's doing a counting now, and she's going to get through stage one as easy as she possibly can. She knows she's safe. There's no use burning any more matches than she needs to. That's absolutely right. It's a nice, slow and measured start by the more experienced athletes who have done this Eliminator format before. I remember the first time we did the Eliminator in Hamilton Island in 2017, everyone just burst out of the gates and then <laughs> paid for it in a big, big way later on in the stages as the true brutality of this format came into its own. But a recap on the distances, of course, it's a 300 metre swim. It's about a four and a half kilometre bike. And then it is a 1800 metre run. But in 10 minutes time, after Emma Jeffcoat crosses the line, the clock will start ticking and we'll start it all again. So the gaps will be a little bit smaller in terms of recovery time for these athletes who are behind Emma Jeffcoat. I wonder if she just thinks to herself, well, the clock will start ticking. I'm nearly 30 seconds ahead. A little bit less time for everyone else to recover. Yeah, without question. The, the 10 minute rest starts from her. She's the only one who gets 10 minutes. So it is a matter of cruising your way through. She's obviously going to have some 
So I think Annie's going to grab her and, and give her an interview, and uh, the others can get maybe there's some play in that. It's uh, but I'm just really, really impressed with Emma. I think uh, she showed a lot of talent coming into Jersey. I thought she was a little flat in both Malta and Mallorca. She's gone away over the over the Christmas period. She's moved across to New Zealand under a new coach. She's done a lot of work with Ashley Gentle, and she's come out and made a huge statement. Absolutely, she has. There's Laura Lindemann, and there is in the pink jersey denoting the leader of the championship series, Katie Zafiris, who has just been supreme across the course of the three rounds thus far. So focused on the process, knows herself so well, knows how to transition from off season into a race of such importance. Rachel Clamers run right on the back of Cassandra Bogart. For no real reason that I can see, but it won't matter in the end. There is your stage leader as it stands, and potentially there's a smile which says, I'm about to make a thousand US dollars and I'm going to win a stage and take the yellow tape. Always a good feeling. Emma Jeffcoat is your stage one winner, and congratulations to the Australian. A great swim, and just built on it from there. Bogrand, Perio, and Clamour finish in a group in second through fourth position. I think she's going straight to the ice bath. As you know, that's over there. They try and pull off. She's straight out of the sun. Lindemann in fifth, the 22-year-old, the German sprint champion, two-time junior world champion, Laura Lindemann. So much pedigree amongst all of our athletes. Katie Zafiris comes home in sixth, athlete gentle sevens. Can take a hashi back here in the Getting silver bullet, the jersey, the silver jersey. The just keep jersey. saying it's silver. Uh, it's very silver. It's absolutely silver. Summer Rappaport behind her. And there is Charlotte Michael McShane. Thompson, our race director, ready to count people out. Charlotte McShane is in. Taylor Spivey, the American, is in as well. She comes off a win. She looks like she's hurt herself. What's happened? She looks in pain. It looks like a shoulder. We'll get an update, but she's in tears. This doesn't look good for Taylor Spivey and her championship charge. That is huge. I wonder whether she came off on the bike and we didn't see it. Well, something says that she, she signaled to her shoulder. Did something happen in the swim? She's usually a lot closer to the front in the swim. Tears from Desiree Reidner as well. And, and an unfortunate race for number 94, Danielle DeFrancesco, the 24-year-old from the Gold Coast, who was in second position. But the big news here... No doubt whatsoever is Taylor Spivey. Someone down this. Desiree Ridener, who really Ridener gave everything. She yeah. really does leave it all out there. One of our young athletes, the Canadian. She's collapsed already, and we'll see that a few more times, I think, across the course of this weekend with the humidity as it is here, right on the equator in Singapore. Lovely shot on our drone as some of our athletes look to get in the recovery. The ice bars are coming out, and I can see, is that Taylor Spivey being wheeled off in a wheelchair? In the distance there, we'll get updates from Annie Emerson as soon as we possibly can bring you some updates. But in the recovery area, there's some smiles, there's some tears already. Straight into the ice bar and drop that cool temperature. It's ice bath time. Lucy Hall. Desiree Reidner as well, Claudia Seabock, all athletes who have been eliminated. And the pain is evident and it's only going to get worse. Hilda Choi from Hong Kong, she's already raced in 2019 in Asia as well. Third in the Asian Games in 2018 in the mixed team relay. It's Coach Jonathan Hall in the black there talking to Desiree. Like Lucy Hall hops out of the bath there too. Vanessa Della Torre wearing the Mexican flag. It's hot. It it's is very, super very hot, hot. Absolutely right. We saw we saw similar similar scenes after the event in Hamilton Island, our pilot event. It was uh, carnage. Especially oh, there's Taylor Spivey there. So she hasn't yep, been wheeled off. She's in. So we'll get an update as soon as we possibly can from Annie down there on the ground. But at the moment. A little bit of a worry for Taylor Spivey and her championship charge. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. She's been training with Joel Filiol's crew in Spain last week alongside Vincent Lewis, her boyfriend and the championship leader. She'd be very disappointed, Danielle. She was she really set up the race and she is now. There is Vincent alongside Taylor. She's not sure what's happened there. She seems to have recuperated to some extent. 
She's going back out. Here is a recap of the stage as it happened. It was a clean start and into the um, bath water, I suppose, if you like, at 29 degrees. And Cassandra Bogran looked very, very solid from the outset. She's known, obviously, for her running, but her all-round game is outstanding. Behind her, Emma Jeffcoat, Di Francesco and Spivey were their top four as they came out of the water. It was very slippery there on the docks as I came in and out yesterday a couple of times, but we didn't have too many slips, which is good, into and out of transition. And it was fairly clean for our top athletes, and it was a top three in Bo Grant, Di Francesco and Jeff Coat with the chasing pack, all the colours of the rainbow in terms of jerseys. The cream certainly rising to the top. A big pack forming around that third through 11th mark and all these athletes experienced and knowing exactly what they had to do. Jeffco came off the bike by herself as Di Francesco came to grief around the back end of the course and it was a lovely two lap jog, as lovely as it can be in these conditions anyway for Emma Jeffco. Behind her Clamour, Zafiris, Takahashi Lindemann, Ashley Gentle moved her way up the pack from 22nd out of the swim and finished in the top 10 but there was a big, big gap to Emma Jeffcoat who looked like she was more comfortable in the run than we've seen her in recent rounds here. But the pace hasn't really been turned on yet. A thousand US dollars for a stage win for Emma Jeffcoat and a big boost at the start of the grand final weekend. And what a way to start her 2019 season and to round out what has been a fantastic Super League season from September to now. And as the sun beats down on Sentosa Cove, we go down to Annie Emerson, who is with Taylor Spivey for an update. You came over the, the finish line looking really distressed. Ash. What happened out there? Um, on the first lap of the yeah. bike, uh, I, I couldn't Just see one of the barriers, and I, I leaned into it, and I crashed, and my shoulder really hurts right now. <laughs> and it looks to me like you've already got some scar on that shoulder, so you've come down on there before, right? Um, I, I just have some like overuse issue, <laughs> issues with it, but um, yeah, I hope it holds up for today and tomorrow. That was the first race, but there was a lot of athletes looking very hot and very tired. Yeah, it was it was really hot out there. Um, I tried to play it smart, but after I hit the barrier, I think uh, that just took a lot out of me. Okay, listen, we'll let you go to get warmed up for the next race. Okay, Good luck. There's going to be no need to get warmed up out there, absolutely not, but glad to see a smile on the face of Taylor Spivey and let's hope that she can work through that shoulder pain and keep going and into stage two and the eliminated women provisionally of course before we can lock it in Kim Kilgrove from the Philippines as Clara Dorner is as well Erin Story and Megan Foley the two Americans Vanessa De La Torre the Mexican Long Hoy from Macau De Francesco we know about obviously was in second position and Claudia Seabock was in 23rd the number 23 so 15 go through to the Eliminator Stage 2 as we already begin our countdown. Only about five minutes to go before we do this thing all again and we can expect Maka the pace to start to raise as the 15 who are, who are left all have incredibly long and impressive resumes. Oh, without question. Now, now mistakes really, really matter. You can't, you can't cruise. I think in, in, the first, in the first stage you've always got so many more in the event. You can start to look around and, and play your cards right. But now, Stage 2, it's, uh, it's critical. Oh, Di Francesco is through. Well, we're hearing at the moment yes. that potentially Di Francesco is through. We'll get confirmation. Hello, that. She's no, out. She, no, she's out. We're, we're just still getting the information as it comes through. We'll go down now to Annie, who I think has Danielle with her, and we'll find out exactly what happened. Daniela, I'm so sorry. You set the swim up perfectly. And also the bike. Just tell us what happened out there on the bike course. Yeah, I'm not too sure. In the last corner, I either clipped the ground or the drain. I'm not too sure. I can't really remember. But yeah, it's such a shame because it's feeling so good. Yeah. You, you, you're used to riding on technical courses, but just how tough and technical is this course? Yeah, it's pretty technical. Um, you have to make sure that you get everything right, otherwise something can go wrong very easily. Well, you've got some nasty wounds, and unfortunately you fought back, you got back on your bike, but you have been eliminated. So uh, really sorry for you today, Daniela, that your day is over. Yeah, that's okay. Just got to look forward to tomorrow now. Yeah, okay. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. That's the beauty of Super League Triathlon. It's also the toughest part. Multi-day racing, make a mistake on day one. There's still day two to play for, but going to be uh, a little bit sore and sorry, Danielle Di Francesco. She's certainly a rising star in Super League as well. And we're all playing, really, 
not only for 1.5 million US dollars, but also for 10 contracts. So at the, the end of the championship series, which will be tomorrow afternoon, when the championship points are dealt out, the top 10 will get a guaranteed contract to the 2019-20 season of Super League, which will begin in Jersey in September. Guaranteed cash, guaranteed contract, trips to each of the Super League rounds. And that is a very, very big carrot, Chris McCormack. Oh, without question. And if you look at that, between 10 and 15, those points are very, very critical. With, with Kirsten Kasper out, she'd be sitting home in the USA watching these results. With double points on the line, she could fall out of that top 10. It's, uh, it's going to be interesting. I know talking to all the women, that's all they're focused on for this weekend. As we gear up already, if you can believe that, for stage two of the Eliminator. Again, swim, bike, run. 300 metres in the swim. About four and a half kilometres on the bike, five laps of the course, and then two laps on the run. And the top ten will go through to stage three and a maximum 25 round points. Here we go for stage two. Jeff Coat gets off to a good start. She was so strong in the water behind Cassandra Bogra in stage one. Let's see if she can do the same again. This is when it really starts to tighten up. There's no chance to cool down, really. We didn't see any of the athletes... Well, we did see Taylor Spivey in the ice bath, but yes. I didn't see many of the other athletes again, it's who a, are coming in for stage two. But again, Bo Grant. Yes, and on the far side, solid. after, after the, the results, you get to pick your position on the pontoon, and uh, Emma Jeffcoat went wide. She's a little bit further back than she was in the first event. Is that Bo? It's not Bo Grant. I think. Bo Grant at the top, at yes, the bottom of our screen. No, I think Bo Grant's right in the centre of in screen. In the centre of screen. And someone's gone out completely. I cannot see on the far right. A little difficult to see as they come out nice and quick. We, we'll get a closer look as they round the turn. But Jeff Coat, who would be on the left of your screen, far left out of shot. She's on the inside run in the blue. There she is there as we pan across. As they start to come together, coming towards the boy about 140-odd metres out. It's already relatively spread out. With less athletes in the water, it becomes more and more difficult. If you have a swim weakness, there's no one filling those gaps, no one filling those holes, and you can suddenly find yourself alienated and alone, and small gaps become big gaps. It's where the big swimmers start to lay it down, especially off these two swim boys. When you start to move slower around the cans, it, it crunches up behind, and the front athletes tend to get further and further away. The pace certainly rising, as you would expect in stage two and if you have a little bit in the tank it's the opportunity to really break it wide open and I think that is Bogran who leads again get a hint of the French flag there as she took a breath it's very choppy and you don't want to be caught in as I said you put those two boys make it quite close together and it can create a lot of chop and a swimmers swimming over the top of each other as they come back round the second boy and back to home but out the front it's almost single file back in about seventh position is katie zafaris who looks very very comfortable she's a bit further back but she's very very controlled that groups together and starting to gap spread out now just off those swim boys as we thought it would and this is when the gaps open as the, as the front swimmers start to lay down that pressure and that pace it drags that front group away and the weaker swimmers at the back that gap starts to open up those gaps multiply as they hit land. We keep talking about how you have to measure your efforts in the Eliminator, finish in 12th, finish in 8th and then win it. But if you cast your mind back to Malta, Paddy Zafiris won every stage. Yeah. So if you're strong enough, you can win every stage, collect the 2,000 US dollars for each of the stage wins and win the whole thing as well. Exactly. It'd be, that'd be a great day. It's what she did. It would. It would be a great day, but a very, very different course and incredibly different conditions. That hill at the uh, the end of the Malta race, which you can go back and watch on SuperLeagueTriathlon.com or on YouTube as well, was absolutely brutal and very different as Cassandra Beaugrand continues. And another thing to note on Malta is Cassandra Beaugrand, who's leading again, was not at that event. And if we, if we go back to the triple mix event in Jersey, the swim bike run format on day one, Cassandra Beaugrand and Ashley Gentry dominated at his far as that day. And, yes, uh, that's true. But yeah. Cassandra Bogran has never raced an eliminator. Hey, agreed. This is the agreed. first time she's, played, she's raced this format. Shall she we seems see. to be doing very well. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be working out well for yeah. us so far. As they come out of the water now for the second time, the top 15 athletes, and there's a group of four at the back who are finding the going a little bit tough. Bogran comes out first. Jeff goes second. It's the same as before. Summer Rappaport. Yuko Takahashi is there as well. Katie Zafiris, Taylor Spivey. 
Rachel Klammer, Leonie Perio, Laura Lindemann. Here's the gap. Man. Four the athletes now at the back. Ashley Gentle is in this back row. That's Charlotte McShane. Ashley Gentle is in a danger zone here. There's five back here. Five will go in this race. She has to close the gap. That's a significant lead. It is indeed. So, Bokran, first out on the bike. No, Jeff Code will come out ahead of her and Takahashi. Well, she's bridged that gap, that little one that she had, and she's in third position. Ashley Gentle, third. Gentle, Gentle Hilbert Choi, Elena Danilova as well. 24 seconds okay, behind Cassandra Bokran. That is an enormous gap. Over 300 metres. Yuka Takahashi on the front. Cassandra very tactically clever, straight on the wheel. And again, Emma Jeff Code. It really sets it up. The swim we're seeing a lot is the swim is setting up this entire race. You get a great swim start, get around those swim boys, you get through this first lap and you can gap it. You get through the chicane in particular, which is about to come up, big left-hand turn, just off these cobbles. And you get onto the back straight onto the road, you can open up with some speed, and that's where Emma did her damage in the last event. Leone Perio in fourth, Katie Zephyrus leads the chasing pack once again. Very easy to just go a little bit too hot into that one. No doubt whatsoever. I wonder if that's where Taylor Spivey found grief. See the bigger gears as Katie Safaris comes out with much bigger gears than the others. It's just hard to accelerate. Rachel Clammer there. But there's the top ten. So if nothing changed, if the results stayed the same throughout the rest of this stage and they got off and cruised, all ten are through to the final, the final stage. So there's Ashley Jones has some work to do. She does indeed, Zephyrus, and Lucy Hall leads the pack behind Zephyrus. So a great return to Super League Racing for Lucy Hall, who battled glandular fever throughout 2018. Laura Lindemann there as well, Summer Rappaport, Spivey and Rachel Klammer. So good to see Spivey back on the bike and within the top ten. So is that our 10 athletes and then a big gap That's back? That's a big gap. Oh, oh, right. Trying to see Someone's going to need Ashley to bridge. And the issue you have if you're Ashley Gentle, she's got to be all in now. So the women up front get to cruise through, look around, count heads and, uh, and, and conserve their energy for stage three. But Ashley Gentle has got to head down and she can do nothing but chase. She's got a massive run on her and can run herself into contention. But okay, this is a 24 second gap she needs to close to down. Around there, KN, the there's only the, 5k to do it. To the last run. Meg Shane is in trouble. Well, we'll if anyone can run her way back in, so it is Ashley Gentle, Zephyrus, Lindemann, Hall, Rappaport, Spivey, and Clammer are your top 10. All of our split leaders and our transitional leader within that group. And then it's nine seconds back to Charlotte McShane, who leads the chasing pack. The Australian. Joined five seconds further back by Ash Gentle, Desiree Reidner, Elena Danilova and Hilda Choi are your 15 competitors. And those names at the bottom of your screen are all in big, big danger. Charlotte McShane needs to cross that gap. The 28-year-old originally started in long course racing, 70.3. Now she's very sharp on the short course. Under 23 world champ, that's six years ago now. Part of that mixed team relay world championship team in 2017. As you can feel the heat, it's so hot. I wish you could, I wish people at home could feel how difficultly hot it is. I've got to, just got a breeze from, from that black carpet and it nearly burnt me. It is so hot. It is very, very warm and uh, it's almost oppressive, the heat, as you can see on the faces of the people in the uh, ice bars at the end of stage one. And here are our 10 qualifiers and at the back of that pack is Lucy Hall has dropped down. She will have had a count and realised she doesn't need to be in sixth. She just needs to be in tenth position to scrape home as they come through, or about to come through the finish line once again for another lap on the bike. Zephyrus it is now that leads the way. She just, I just, you get the feeling with Katie Zephyrus and she's so experienced now and almost is out, well, from our test event. She's the carryover champion, if you like. Yes. She, she knows how to do it. She builds through her racing, and uh, you saw in the first race, she really took it self-control. She counted heads the whole way through, and now it's the first time we've seen her on the front of the race. And just the cream rising to the top, perhaps, as we progress through this women's eliminator on Saturday here at the grand final in Singapore. The gap now between Lucy, Lucy Hall, Hall and Ashley Gentle has gone down to 10 seconds. So Ash Gentle is really pushing her way through here. Charlotte McShane right behind her, and then a further 11 seconds back to Desiree Reidner and Elena Danilova. 
and actually Ryder was another one who just looked so gassed at the end of stage one. She's backed it up in stage two and she's doing her best to stick with it, but she definitely races with a heart on her sleeve, the youngster from Canada. That was Ash Jenner. You saw Lucy Hall go through and Ash Jenner's about 10 seconds back. Taylor Spivey right on the back of that group. Lucy Hall. Lucy Hall losing the touch. The athlete is Ashley Gentle. So, Lucy Hall, she's known as the mermaid because she's so good in the water. She's been working very, very hard on the other parts of her race and she might have to run to hold off Ashley Gentle for the last spot in the third stage of the women's here in Sentosa Cove. Taylor there Spivey. is Taylor Spivey, who just, just dropped back, back a little bit yeah, too. With that shoulder's playing up a little more. She, she's very technically astute on the bike, and uh, it's not like her to back. Charlotte McShane and Ashley Gentle working together to see if they can track oh, down Lucy Hall and then of course Taylor Spivey if they both want to go through. They'd be looking up there, counting up, counting the numbers up front, but more so looking, saying, who can I outrun? Who am I better than both? Trouble. There's obviously a bike so problem. Lucy Hall, I think they may believe they There's have a bike problem for Spivey. She's in trouble. Most of the other women She's up front are very, very Is this going to be the door? Yeah, There's Majefko a bike knows she needs to stay at the front yeah. of this pack. No doubt about that whatsoever. Leone Perio is a good yeah. runner. Rachel Clam, we know, can run. Summer Rapper. Port is very good runner. a very, very good runner, and uh, we can't really fault Taylor Spivey either, so it's going to be very interesting to see as the gap now three seconds from Hall to Gentle and then McShane, so we could see some changes here with on the fourth lap of five on the bike and then two laps on the run, and Ash Gentle and Charlotte McShane are stalking Lucy Hall, there you can see the three of them. But McShane and Gentle will know that two into one does not go and they'll need to track down one more. And here are all of our women's leaders. Summer Rappaport now at the back of that pack. And Taylor Spivey you knows she needs to tack herself on with these two Australians coming hard from the back of the pack. She just doesn't look as comfortable in this race as she did in, in stage one. She uh, head down a lot. I'm wondering if that shoulder's playing up. She's just letting those gaps open. She was so quick in training through that chicane. It just looks a little bit tentative. Maybe it sh shook her confidence a little, the crash. And... Uh, that zigzagging off the back of the front group. She's got to head down again. Taylor Spivey I'm talking about. It just makes for more difficult racing. The place she wants to be is right on the back of Summer Rappaport's wheel. Well, speaking of right on the back of the wheel, that is Ashley Gentle. And behind her, Charlotte McShane, Lucy Hall has been popped out of the top ten. So, as it stands, Ashley Gentle is tenth. Charlotte McShane, eleventh. Lucy Hall in 12th. Nine. Taylor's either backing a run or is uncomfortable. Nine. I'm still trying to read it. She's very tentative and through the oh corners there. Goodness. She's let that gap open. We've I think she knows she's, she's safe. Oh, uh, Ashley General will run at her. She'll be looking Three at ladies. Charlotte McShane kicking okay at a five or six second advantage on the run. I may have her covered, but still putting yourself in a difficult position. I would not like to do that. Yeah, that yeah. initial reaction as she came across the line was... Yeah. I didn't think we'd be seeing her again, to be honest. The way she was holding it, I thought maybe a dislocated shoulder or subluxed it and in it went again. But at the moment, the gap between Spivey and Gentle is nine seconds. Ashley Gentle knows how to run. Great. Can she cover a nine-second gap? This is the last lap on the bike. They go around turn two, come across the far side of the marina and then through the chicane for the last time. Zephyrus, Jeff Coates sitting in third. Clamour behind Bo Grant. Spivey is doing her best to cling on to the back as well. She That's has found Summer Rappaport. Spot, yes. and well, she's, Summer, got, she's got a lot on the line. She's, she's chasing a, a podium finish overall in the series. She could potentially win this entire championship race if she was to, to lock out Katie Safaris. And uh, so I'm very, very, I'm, I'm always watching Taylor because she's one of the ones I looked at this course and thought she's a potential Bikes. winner of the round. 25 points on offer for Saturday, 25 for Sunday, and then your rankings and therefore championship points are decided by your total points across the weekend. So if Rachel Clammer makes it through to stage three and finishes perhaps fifth, she's currently two points ahead of Taylor Spivey. Spivey goes out in this stage, she can finish at best 11th, and suddenly she has a mountain to climb exactly. to take third position overall, or second if both of them can pass the absent Kirsten Casper. That, that's the key. Kirsten Casper is not here, so that, that position is open to get off the bike. It's been interesting the transition. She's got Yoko Takahashi in the silver jersey, fastest in transition. Taylor Spivey off the back, that's Yoko second off the bike. And Jeff Coat again leading in. 
First to rack, Emma Jeffco. Can she run away to another thousand US dollars? Off she goes. That was a good transition from her, but she's chased out by Takahashi, who's always excellent. A little bit slower from Katie Zafiris and also from Cassandra Bogran. And Taylor Spivey is absolutely sprinting, and she'll be well ahead of Summer Rappaport. Summer's transitions have been terrible. I saw her in stage one. It was woeful, and that was she was second in and, and last out. So McShane was going to have all the work to do, but Ashley Gentle is absolutely punching it. To use an Australian phrase, that means she is putting it all out there to try and catch our top ten, which currently is led by Emma Jeffcoat, Paddy Zafiris, Yuko Takahashi, Rachel Clammers there as well, Cassandra Bogran, that's your top five from Leone Perio. Another of the French Fat Five. Spivey's moved up past Laura Lindemann and Summer Rappaport, and there is Ashley Gentle at the back of your screen. That's your ten. So Rappaport is on the bubble in a big way and Gentle is looking for a way in. There's no doubt about that. And there is that running style of Katie Zafiris. It doesn't matter whether she's going half pace or full pace. It looks exactly the same. And Desiree Reidner, who, as we said, looked like she gave absolutely everything in stage one. She was a little bit back in the pack in this one and she has decided to conserve herself for the enduro tomorrow, which is going to be absolutely brutal. Nine legs, swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run, swim, bike, run. No breaks, eight transitions, winner takes all, with two athletes eliminated at the end of every single leg. Look at all our jerseys in that top seven. The, the, the French connection is splitting that with, with Cassandra Bogrand sitting in fourth. But Emma Jeffcoat again in the blue jersey, looks magnificent. Katie Zafaris in the pink leaders jersey is right there. Yuko Takahashi, our fastest in transition, right there. The only jersey missing is our Red Runners jersey, but it was, is owned by Kirsten Casper at the moment, who's not racing. So they've been the form athletes all, all season, and they've been the form athletes in the key disciplines, and they're right in the action now. I could be wrong, but just as we had the camera there on Ashley Gentle, she didn't have that comfortable running style that she usually has. She's done a lot of work. She's had to put herself back into this race, ten go through. Again, it doesn't matter if you're in the top ten. It's what happens in the next stage that matters, but what does matter is how well and how easy you get through this stage. And Ashley Jones had to lot, work a lot harder than a lot of these other women. What a boost for Emma Jeffco to be up there with Cassandra Bogran, Katie Zafiris, Rachel Clammer, and Yuko Takahashi. All excellent athletes and such a great weekend thus far for Emma Jeffco, who has looked very comfortable and extremely elite company across the course of a couple of stages. And she, she looks comfortable again here in the top five as she rounds the turn on the inside of your championship leader wearing the pink Katie Zafiris. Sandra Bogran looks magnificent running. There in 11th position is Charlotte McShane and in 12th position is Lucy Hall. Those two are right on the bubble and they'll be chasing Ashley Gentle or indeed whoever she passes if she manages to hoist herself into 9th position in its pace certainly rising as we hear the bell for the final lap of stage two in the women's eliminator in the grand final of super league triathlon here in sentosa in beautiful sunny and incredibly hot singapore it's hot <laughs> it is really hot i don't think we've mentioned that yet no, have we, we mentioned haven't. that but i have to admit you look at cassandra bone ground we saw it when she raced in jersey she plays a tactically smart game on the run she's very very relaxed uh, of all the efforts she's looking over counting heads but her sprint finish is remarkable but she's a 4'11", 1,500-metre runner, so she has pure middle-distance speed. And I, and I question whether it came down to a sprint finish, especially on the straight. Probably only that woman on screen there, Ashley Gentle, has the leg speed to outrun her. Ashley Gentle sitting all alone in 10th position, but she is safe. Eight seconds behind Hugo Takahashi. Does, she doesn't need to do any more. And it looks like we potentially have, barring incident or mishap, our top 10 to go through to the third stage and there is seven of them looking like the reservoir dogs all spread out side by side taylor spivey looks a lot better than she did on the bike i think she's got to head back into this racing and she's just sitting off the back i, I really think this course suits taylor if her head's in it she could potentially win this round i i i really do i was watching it watching a train on this course i watched her run vincent louis our, our, our men's leader is, is her partner and is talking it through a lot of that chicane, a lot of the curves on this course, and I, I think she's uh, she's here to win. Rachel Plummer just having a little bit of a look around. We haven't spoken much about Rachel, but she's been 
sitting in third or fourth position for the bulk of this racing so far this weekend. She's currently third overall, but in terms of races that are out here, she is second behind Paddy Zafiris in training in Africa with Richard Murray, her fiancé. So she's accustomed to the heat. She's always been good in the early season. She was the champion in Abu Dhabi, the first race of the WTS season in the heat as well in 2018. So she knows how to start a season well. She was fourth in Cape Town. Fourth seems to be some of the time her favourite number, but Cape Town World Cup a couple of weeks ago. She got stitches on the run in that race and we're two kilometres in and um, a little bit of a stomach bug as well, but she still managed to make her way to fourth position and now alongside Cassandra Beaugrand, she's leading this second stage as these athletes realise that they don't have too much work to do, another little look over the shoulder and they just have to jog at home. A lot more shade now, which would be a big relief. That whole back section of the run course is shaded. I wonder Except if the for that bit, which looks like it was in an oven. <laughs> I'm wondering if some of the spectators will move that way because the exposed area near the finish line is brutally hot. I'm, I'm very, yeah, very is. impressed with Cassandra Beaugrand. She, just, well, she looks like she's jogging yeah, down to the really shops does. for some milk. She really does. The French have been all over the racing both in stage one and two. They look so comfortable and composed. They've been out here longer than the other athletes. They got in here earlier, and uh, which tends to say, I'm focused on a, on a big performance, a big round this weekend. Just jogging down to the corner shop. It's Andrew Beaugrand, who doesn't look in the slightest bit of discomfort. And behind her, Leone Perio, as we say, the French five, three. Great Frenchman in the men's race coming up. Vincent Lewis, of course, we've talked about him. Dorian Connix joins us for the first time as well. Alongside Leo Berger, who's in sixth position, right behind the Kiwi Hayden Wild. See, has a run for the thousand dollars here. It's uh, it's like worth, a dash for cash. Yeah, it's like a dash for cash. It's worth a little squirt of effort. It's a, it's a thousand dollars. It's money for nothing. And uh, you've already done a lot of effort. There's three, three to one doesn't go, and it'll be interesting to see. Uh, if anyone has a run at it, they had a chat. Uh, they're talking about it. Who wants the money a little bit more? I think it's going to be Rachel Glamour, is it? Who wants it? Oh, 500 bucks a piece. They're going to split it. They're going to split it, I suppose. Leonie Perio second, Laura Linderman, Summer Rappaport, Katie Zafiris. And Emma Jeff Jeffco through. comes home knowing she goes through to stage three. The top ten on the day here. Taylor Spivey is through also as is both Yuko Takahashi and Ashley Gentle. And there is your top ten to go through to stage three. And there was no one in the end who was anywhere near them. So stage three is basically a final. Uh, this, this splits the race results now, what happens in the next stage. So all bets are off. It's about recovering between this stage and the next one, jumping in the ice bath, as you can see on the left of the screen. Charlotte McShane in 11th. Unlucky number 11 for Charlotte McShane. Of course, there is a scoring system you can find on our website, superleaguetriathlon.com, using the existing time set across the championship weekend. We'll get to that, but right now, McShane, Hilda Choi, Lena Dental over the Russian, Lucy Hall, who gave her all and stayed in the top 10 for the bulk of that, and Desiree Ridener, who couldn't quite do the job in stage two, but gave everything she had in stage one. We'll have a look back at how it all played out, and it was Cassandra Bogran who again led the swim out, so she has been, and you can see that quick, almost six beat kick that she's employed to great effect. And she was the first around the, the boy here, 140 metres, and we keep saying it, but that water is as warm as the air here, so there's no relief whatsoever for her athletes once they jump into that water. And she let out once again, the French woman ahead of Jeff Coat, Summer Rappaport, Yuko Takahashi was there also, and Lucy Hall. And it was a pack of three at the front of the bike, but it didn't take long for the pack to grow as each of our athletes endeavoured to not be on the bubble. And in the end, it was Ashley Gentle who saw off Lucy Hall. But on the bike, Jeff Coat came in leading once again from Takahashi, Zafiris, and Lindemann. Bogran, you can see there with the helmet on, she was back a little bit at that point, but her run is just superb and she knows she can rely on that. She has the highest score on the run of anyone, which I'll explain in just a second. Rappaport, Spivey, who came back after that little shoulder incident, hitting a barrier and clipping a corner and coming off her bike, but she's made of strong stuff, Taylor Spivey. There's no doubt about that. A little discussion about who wanted the thousand bucks, 500 each. 
neither myself or Marker would have been as generous. There's no doubt about that. I would that. have run straight over the top here. Taylor Spivey there hopping out of the ice bath right now. Just trying to lower the core temperature before she sets off for the third stage where it is all on the line. A little bit of recovery, a quick drink of water. Some ice down the front of the top and down the back as well. And off we go. There's no time whatsoever. It's a quick dip, isn't it? Lucy Hall there getting some ice water on her head from one of the staff. Also in the water there, Elena Danilova. Hilda Joy, who has really just been outstanding there. She's really making the most of the ice water. And Charlotte McShane, who will no doubt be disappointed to finish in 11th in that little shake of the head for her. But we do use the existing time set across the championship weekends this season and distill the performances down to rankings against each other, given to give a score out of 10 for the swim, the bike and the run. And Cassandra Bogran and Ashley Gentle have a 9.3 and a 9.4. They are by far the best runners. And Emma Jeffco down with a 5.2. Obviously, she's, ex she's gotten a lot better. But we'll go down to Annie right now, who's with Taylor. Can she improve overnight? This knock will most probably... Taylor, can we have a quick update on your injury, your shoulder? You got round the swim okay, so we're hoping all's all right. Yeah, the pains are slowly setting in. <laughs> But on the swim, I didn't notice it too much, but I, I know I'm starting to feel as the race goes on, so... What happened on the bike? Because she seemed to drop off the pace a little bit. Um, I think I'm just being cautious because of, because of my crash. Yeah. Hey, you made it through to the final race, so good luck. Well, we're just going to hop over. We're just going to hop, hop over here to the Netherlands. Klama, Rachel Klama, you look really strong there. Nice to see Cassandra Bogrand push you over the finish line first for that round. Yeah, it was good. I mean, I'm, I'm running, I'm running goes well. I'm just struggling a bit on the bike and on the swim. Starting to get some sight stitches, which is not a good sign. But last round, and it's very hard, so trying to stay cool. Just how intense is this heat? Because I think it's very difficult for people watching to get a clear idea, really, how hot is it? Really hot. I mean, I thought I would love racing in the heat, especially in our first round of struggle, because I was thinking about how hot it was, and now I'm trying not to think about it and just race. Good luck the next round. But we just have a look over here. Ashley Gentle, who uh, made herself rode and, and ran her way up into a qualifying position. Ashley, just a quick word from you on how you're feeling. Uh, yeah, not feeling that great, but... Um, I'm clawing my way back on the bike each time, so I'll take it. I'll give it all I've got for this last round. You've ridden and ran so strongly, but the swim still is your Achilles heel, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> You're going to have to swim hard in this next round to stay on the feet of the girls in front of you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, good luck. Well, Ashley Daniel didn't quite like that reference to the Achilles heel of swimming. She did come out in 22nd position, though, in the opening stage. There's plenty to do around here in Sentosa Cove. It really is a festival Super League triathlon. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. Plenty of kids having fun uh, in the uh, fan zone. And earlier on, we had a, a fun run as well, which was attended by about five, 500 odd. Yeah, 500. 500. 500 did the race. It was, uh, it was, it was a packed field. We could only fit 500 on the course. So yeah, well, was, this is in slow motion. It yeah. was a lot faster than that yeah. at the time. Um, but plenty to love about that and the locals here in Singapore certainly embracing Super League triathlon, multi-sport in general and all that it has to offer and it's so good to see the support of the locals. Plenty of people also travelling to this event, following their favourite athletes and getting the chance to share the very same course that the athletes uh, get to race on. We had corporate racing as well a little bit earlier on in the day but so good to see multi-sport really gaining a big foothold here in Singapore and, and Super League leading the way. Yeah, without question. It's our, it's our home. We, we spend a lot of time training here. A lot of the athletes come through on their way up to Europe. So it's, uh, it's great to deliver an event like this in Singapore and let's watch it grow and grow and grow. Absolutely right. I've got a couple of those medals at home. I just stole them, though, if yeah, I'm I honest, that. from Malta and Mallorca. I did not do any of the racing. I heard it beep as you I went just, through the airport. I just wanted one, to be fair, and uh, why not? I just took one. That's exactly how it happened, and the smiles there on the Schofield brothers always. They enjoy racing very, very much, and we enjoy seeing them a little bit later on in the men's eliminator. But right now, we're going to get a word from our championship leader, Katie Zafiris, who's with Annie. 
Katie, well, you looked a bit steady in the first round, but we started to see a bit more of the KT that we've seen in Mallorca, Malta and Jersey. How's it starting to feel now? Two rounds down, one to go. Yeah, I mean, the first one felt a little rough. The second one felt a little bit better. It helps. I got clobbered in the swim in the first one, and so the second one I kind of found my groove a bit more. It's like uh, the, being the first race of the season. I feel like I'm getting a little better with each one, so I hope it continues. <laughs> Position seems to be key on the pontoon, right? Uh, yeah, I think position, paying attention, and just being aware of everything that's around you. Just tell me about that bike course, because it looks tough. Yeah, it is tough. You have to be in good position for that, too, and be good around the corners, be safe around the corners, and stay up. Great stuff. I'll let you go and get in. Be safe. Remember what you're doing. And above all, be fast. And Rachel Klammer was exactly that. We thought they crossed the line together, but Rachel Klammer gets the $1,000 from Cassandra Bogart, Leone Perio, two French in the top three. It doesn't matter in the end, though. Laura Lindemann, Summer Rappaport, Katie Zafiris, Emma Jeffcoat again with a great effort. Taylor Spivey comes back from an accident. Ash Gentle and Yuko Takahashi. They are your top ten. Those times now mean nothing. They all line up for a swim, bike, run, sprint final. This is how the Eliminator works. If you're just joining us, we've had two stages already. One lap of the swim, five laps on the bike, two laps on the run. The first 15 go through to stage two. A 10-minute break. We lost eight athletes at the end of stage one. We lose another five at the end of stage two. The top ten going through to a shootout, swim, bike, run for all of the points and the title of champion of the Women's Eliminator and a big, big boost going into tomorrow's Enduro. All of our championship contenders are in this top 10. Katie Zafiris in the pink. She leads by 31 points over Rachel Klammer. Kirsten Kaspar is out. She is at home watching on with much interest to see exactly how it's going to play out and if she can hold on to second position overall. Taylor Spivey is also with a shot of the championship win. Summer Rappaport is there as well. She is in our top five. Yeah, this will be quite interesting. You have Emma Jeffcoat and the American Summer Rappaport and, and um, Katie Zafaris on the far right of the pontoon and the French on the far left. Cassandra's been first around the first swim boy both times. There's Cassandra Bogran in screen there with Laura Lindemann to her left and the only Perrier right there with uh, Yuko Takahashi. Here we go. It is business time in the Women's Eliminator. Your top 10 athletes are in the water for the final time. And we will see at the end of this race who is our Women's Eliminator champ and take maximum points into tomorrow. And already Cassandra Bogran has a length on the field and she is just swimming beautifully across the course this weekend thus far. Everything she's shown, she's swimming, biking and running beautifully. She just crossed the line second in the last stage. She really sets it up with this swim and she's just so fast off the pontoon. It's remarkable. She's two body lengths in front here. We're less than 100 metres into the swim and uh, she's got clear water, which is the place to be. She gets to run around, to swim around quite comfortably. These next two swim boys stay out of the action, can open that, that gap up and uh, set herself up for the bike. That is a huge it's lead massive. on a quality field over the course of 100 metres from Cassandra Bogran. If you're wondering exactly how she managed, or why she's not in contention for the championship title, she's only been in one race, and that was Jersey. And there she is. She was first, I suppose, to hit the water, so nice she really got it right. And she was up first, yeah, nice and straight shallow. over, and boom, she cleared out. And that's a big gap. And that is enough. So she will. I guess stay out of trouble and that is the key on this bike course. We've seen a couple of people come to grief already and out the front you can run your own race and take out those other elements that might get in your way and ruin your day. So she wasn't in Malta, she wasn't in Mallorca but just off the back of her efforts in Jersey she's still hovering around the top 10 and as we keep saying contracts are on the line as well as prize money for the 2019-20 season which is going to be an absolute blockbuster starting in September of course we have qualifiers before that for the other spots but if you're in the top 10 in terms of championship standings at the end of this weekend you will take a guaranteed contract and flights and Ashley who's at the gentle. back there Ashley, Ashley gentle, gentle again so you see how comfortable Cassandra Bogran gets around the, the swim boys and how congested it gets here, and that's where the gaps start to open up. It looked like Laura Lindemann, I may, may in about third position, which looks to be a great swim for her. She stayed out of a bit of that action. I saw Taylor Spivey just before the swim boy jump over the back of Leonie Perrier to find herself a straighter line of the boy, and I think she's got herself through quite smoothly. But it's Ashley Gentle again, who's just off the back of this group, and it's, it'll be a desperational ride if she doesn't get on the back of it. So... 
10 women in the water and the four wow. foot or so lizard we saw yesterday in the water. We decided not to tell the athletes about no. that, but there was... There was a photo of it. They thought it was a crocodile. Yeah, a big lizard in the water, which is making a few people a little bit nervous, but no sign of it. So it's in 11th position as it stands. Cassandra Bogran up the other end in 10th. And great shots from our cameraman That's there. That's Katie Zafiris, who, is as we keep saying, finds a way forward when it matters. And Jeff Coat on her feet. But Katie, this is the closest she's been to the front of the swim and the business end of the racing. And that says a lot about Katie Zafiris' mindset. It's the way she races. She seems to manage her her effort and she swum herself straight back up onto Cassandra Bogart's feet which is uh, this is what Katie does she just winds herself up gets stronger and stronger and it's a strength that actually is a strength and uh, she really intimidates the rest of the field they tend to look around and wonder where Katie is and, and judge their day off their position around her and if you want to win this event you need to move away from her you need to be as far away from Katie as you possibly can yeah she's so consistent she's consistently at the pointy end of all races and, and because of that it almost seems like some of these races revolve around her if it you does. like in terms of yeah. mentally she's the same in the WTS she came into the last round last year uh, on the Gold Coast without having won a race but still had a lead and that shows you how consistent she was but Grant again Jeff, Jeff Coach second again yeah, Katie Zafira is ahead of Leone Perio. Spivey, Clamour, Lindemann, and last out of the water, That's and down. slow to get out of the water too, is Ash Gentle. So she's going to have all the work in the world to do because there is going to be no quarter asked or given in this one. It's transitions under pressure now for Ashley Gentle. She knows she needs to nail this transition to jump on the back of this group. Those are the transitions that matter. That was a great transition. Okay, this is it. From Bogran, who managed to hold off Takahashi, who was also very quick. Ahead there of Rachel Clammer. And Leonie Perio was also with a really solid transition. So no mistakes made. Three seconds back to Taylor Spivey from Jeff Coat. Takahashi, Clammer, Rappaport. Seven seconds off our leader, Cassandra Bogran, right now who has only raced one weekend of Super League and she won on the Saturday in the triple mix in Jersey. Can she win on the Saturday here in Singapore as well? There's Ash Gentle at the back of the pack, just behind Laura Lindemann and still making some adjustments to her of, shoes. Yeah, there's a little bit of a gap to that front four and it's a dangerous place to be, especially if you've got Katie Zafaris in that front four. Cassandra Bogran, Emma Jeffcoat, Leonie Perrier, and that's Katie Zafaris in fourth position. You see that gap back to Yuko Takahashi. She's going to have to move through this she came quickly with Taylor Spivey to make sure she closes that gap, and she's done that. It's a great racing. Rachel Clammer. Summer. And Ash Gentle on the back. Absolutely got to keep holding your pace through that chicane as much as you can because you've got to get on the pace quickly as they come around the back of the course and onto the tarmac. That is the key. Because you can lose a lot of momentum going through that chicane if you don't manage it correctly. Yeah, question. And Katie Zafaris on the front, she just winds it up, her strength, the power, she, she pushes a much bigger girl, gear than the other women, and those gaps are critical, you see Rachel Clammer knows that, and Summer Rappaport is just off the back with Laura Lindemann and Ash Jenner, the one thing you know is Ashley Jenner is used to chasing down groups, so she's going to work, and you're seeing it strung out a lot more than we have in the other races, the gaps are there, there's only 10 in this final, and as we said, all bets are off, whoever wins this race wins today's round, so just as we thought, the only time that it matters, Katie Zafaris is on the front of this in the race that matters. And, and is laying down the pressure. Hanging on, Emma Jeffcoat in fourth oh, position. Taylor Spivey bow gearing through that corner. Let's let that gap open. And these three now are in danger of missing the group. And there's your super three with two French on the back of our series leader, Katie Zafaris. Jeffcoat chases. She, got, she was 15th in the eliminated, knocked out in stage two back when we had it in Malta, so a vastly improved performance from Emma Jeffcoat behind the two French women, Leone Perio and Cassandra Bogran, and Katie Zafiris leads when it matters. Yuko Takahashi behind them from Rachel Clammer as well. And Taylor Spivey, and those two are sitting in third and fourth position in, in the overall series, so it's Katie Zafiris putting distance between those two. They're the only two that can pass her in the championship, and just when she needs to, she does it. That's right, there they are, and the gap's there's too many riders between Rachel Clamber and Taylor Spivey and up the front, Katie Zafira. So she can't seal the championship today, but she can take great strides exactly. in wrapping it up tomorrow. She's going to, the more riders she can put between herself 
and Spivey and Clamour at the bar back of your screen there, out of focus, the better. And at the moment, there's four. Yeah, without question. And again, all day the French have been on the front end, but Jeff has been there. It's a great, strong front pack, and you can see the desperation in Rachel Clamour's face. Taylor Spivey needs help, and they hope that woman on screen there, Ashley General, moves up because you know she'll work and try and close down those gaps. But Rachel Clemmer's head's down, the gap's open, that's a that's a specific statement. And Taylor looks tired. Taylor looks tired. Yeah, just to have you updated, check on the Super League triathlon Instagram and Twitter accounts and on Facebook as well as we bring the news to you in the wrap-up of this race on how Taylor Spivey is as she pulls up. So we'll try and keep you updated across the, our social media and also during the men's race, which comes up after this one. And that will be fantastic. But right now, with a couple of laps left on the bike and then the run, it's Katie Zafiris, who has, who won in Jersey, who won in Malta, and only an accident in transition. Very uncharacteristic. Stopped her from taking the full 75 from 75. 50 points on offer. So 40% of our total championship points are here in Singapore because we like to make things interesting. Yeah, and you can see you're turning the screws up and you're seeing Yuko Takahashi yo-yoing off the back of that group and that gap between Rachel Clammer and Taylor Spivey and that front group is opening up. It's all being done by by her by Blue Safaris. You she see, didn't really get Jeff, that corner right, turned in a little early. But you can see the strength and there's the gap and that's the winning gap. These are the two she knows. She's going to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. We see it. We saw it in Malta. We saw it in Majorca. We saw it in Jersey and it's a shutdown of the racing, but it's going to be very, very interesting. She's she thinking of Taylor Spivey and Rachel Clammer and, and neglecting the fact that Cassandra Bogrand is probably the most talented runner in the field. Is she prepared to give up that position because she's done 90% of this bike work and both of the French have sat just on the back of her wheel conserving energy for the run. Well, the look of pain there on Rachel Clammer's face. She's dropped in behind Ash Gentle and as you say, hoping that Ash can drag them forward because that gap is getting worryingly wide for our second group of five athletes but no one prepared to take the lead from Katie Zafiris and do a bit of work it's a, a lovely place to be sitting on Katie Zafiris's wheel but we keep saying this the, the, the race seems to revolve mentally for the other athletes about where Katie is and another athlete at some point is going to have to get out there and attack if they want to take this one from Zafiris will it be Bo Grant will it be Jeffcoat Leone Perio is finding herself in the best position she's been in across the course of Super League Triathlon. But Gentle, Clamour, Lindemann, Spivey and Rappaport, two of our three championship hopefuls are in that second group in the green and there in the American flag, Spivey is currently sitting ninth. And Jeff Coates suddenly is feeling the elastic band beginning to lengthen a little bit off the back of Yuko Takahashi's wheel. This is the best Ashley Jennings looked. It's the closest yep. to the front she's been. She's prepared to do the work. You see Rachel Clamour dive straight under her wheel. And Katie Zafaris would be aware of that. She's such a professional. She'd know where every single athlete is in this field. She wants that gap. She knows she's got the run. If she can keep Rachel and Taylor out, she'd let Ashley Jennings run through. Because that's another athlete that puts them between the championship points. Well, you don't get a lot of looks back in the field if you're leading this race. There's only really one spot where you yeah. can get a proper look at the gaps, and that is as you make the cross of the finishing line and take two hard left turns and come back through transition. You'll see them glance at the screen too. You'll see them take the glance up as they come down this long straight here. There's a big television screen just past the fan zone. They tend to glance, see where they're positioned, see who's around them, count heads, and... Uh, but here it's going to come down to the run. We've got one lap, I think, after that's three laps. Katie has been on the front of this bike. And look at the gaps starting to open up the top three, I think. Again, the French attack to the wheel. It's Yuko Takahashi and Emma Jeffco that are struggling now with the power that Katie Zafaris is putting out. 2.7 kilometres left in this race. 900 on the bike and 1,800 in the run. And we will crown our women's eliminator champion. And at the moment, it looks like Katie Zafiris is in control of this one. She leads Leone Perio and Cassandra Bogra, the two French women from Yuko Takahashi of Japan and Emma Jeffcoat of Australia. There are your top five. Six seconds now back to Ashley Gentle, Rachel Klammer of the Netherlands, Laura Lindemann. From Germany, Taylor Spivey and Summer Rappaport of the USA. Summer's a magnificent runner as well. It's going to be very, very interesting. The quality in this front group of 10 is remarkable. Six seconds is nothing for Ashley Jenner. We saw her win the final 
grand final of the WTS series last year, out ousting the world champion, Vicky Holland. And, uh, she's been running through this field. I just, I'm very, very interested to see this showdown, this shootout between the French and Katie Zafaris, because I think the quality of athletes are in the front. They've been able to cruise through this, but the gaps are starting to close. That's interesting. They seem to constantly prove us yeah, wrong, yeah. just as we say one thing. They're sitting up up front, which, again. I, which I think is crazy. Katie seems to have sat up. Maybe she's saying, look, I'm sick of doing all the work. Look at Cassandra Bogrand, third wheel. Has just protected herself this entire bike ride. If you're sitting in there, you're resting the legs, it's all about the run. I think with the Eliminator, it's coming down to a 1.8 kilometre shootout between the best women in the sport. Yeah, when you think about it, and not to discount the other athletes in the top five or indeed in the top ten, but we've seen Katie Zafiris run away to victory yeah. plenty of times. We've seen Cassandra Bogrand run away to victory. And if you've done all the work on the front and your competitor in Cassandra Bogrand has not, you then fresh legs. it's very tough to, to compete against someone with the running pedigree that the French woman has. And we could see her after sitting in on the bike. And, and Ashley Channel has closed that gap to less than three seconds. These transition is critical. If Yuko Takahashi's ever going to have a transition that counts, this is the one. See, Rachel Klammer has really pushed up there as well, yeah. and there she is in uh, slot position number two. But Taylor Spivey hasn't been able to do the same thing, and they will both know exactly where each other are. A good transition from Zafiris. Out she goes behind her, Bo Graham, but someone in between them as well. And there is Summer Taylor Rappaport Spivey. who... Ninth out. Summer Rappaport has been very tardy in transition. Doesn't have the best transitions. She's got a big run, but leaves herself a lot of work to do. That's right. Yugo Takahashi has slotted herself in between Zafiris and Klammer who came in in sixth and has left transition in third. Now this is a running race. This is going to be very, very interesting. A 4'11", 1500 metre runner for that girl on screen, Cassandra Bogrand, an amazing talent, only 21 years of age. She was second in the Junior Worlds in the Gold Coast. And uh, she won our opening round in, uh, in Jersey. She sat out the rest of the series, she's come back, she's made a statement that she'd like to win here. And the only time I've ever seen Katie Safaris under pressure is when these two went head to head in Jersey and she ran away in the triple mix which is very similar to this in terms of three stages with breaks in between of course we mix up the traditional swim bike run in that one and she ran her way to three stage wins in a row on debut in Super League in September of course the next day in the enduro Zafiris came back and won eight of the nine legs on her way to a win and a round win overall as well Bergram finished third the Oni's race well, and Rachel Clammer's moved up into fourth. She's looking across at Taylor Spivey, thinking this is my chance. Ashley Gentle's just behind her. If she can keep Ashley behind her, Ashley had a glance back. They're critical points for the overall podium finish for Rachel Clammer and Green. She'll be looking to track down, at the very least, Leonie Perio, but also our two leaders, and the gap is not huge, but right here is the present and the future of Super League Triathlon. There's no doubt about that. Very number local. 16, Zafiris, and number 55, Beau Grant. Yeah, it's like Jersey all over again. These Emma Jeffcoat at the back with Laura Lindemann. Really struggling in the heat, Laura. She's done so well, Laura Lindemann, yeah. in the first two stages, but it is starting to tell, there's no doubt about that. Jeffcoat, very similar, has done incredibly well. Probably her best outing in any day of any race we've had in Super League Triathlon. But those two faces look serene, do they not? I know there's plenty of hearts racing underneath there, but I tell you what, they look like they're not hurting, and that's part of a champion, no doubt. These points are critical. I'm always glancing back behind these two leaders. I'm very eager to see where Rachel Clammer sits with Ashley General just behind her because those, those points count. There's Taylor Spivey, who's looking for a podium finish for first and Casper out. But he's drifting backwards. We saw Summer Rappaport come out of transition last, but has moved away past, what, four or five of the women. Spivey and Clammer will be hoping very much that Cassandra Bogrant can do the job over Katie yeah. Zafiris in this one as well. And at the back, you can see the pain on the face of Laura Lindemann who has really given everything. We haven't seen her since Jersey 2017, where I said she had two accidents yes. in the same spot. Really big ones. Probably the biggest bike accidents we've seen. They went viral on social. They That's did, because they you kept retweeting them every 10 seconds. You were that excited by it. Look at Katie Zafari starting to put down the hammer now. We still have a lap to go, but she squeezes, squeezes, squeezes. And Cassandra Bogrand now has to tack and stay very, very close. She knows she has a bigger kick finish than Katie Zafari's. She cannot let this elastic band break. So it's Zafaris, Bokran, Perio on her own. What a great 
bike and run from Ash Jennel ahead of Rachel Clammer in fifth. So at the moment there's plenty of distance and enough athletes between Zephyrus and Clammer that'll be a big blow for Zephyrus if she can win this one and relegate Clammer to fifth or even sixth and seventh and also Spivey who is back in eighth or ninth position at this point. But at the moment it's the best runner you think in triathlon son currently in second position behind yeah. Katie Zephyrus who continually proves that she is a force to be reckoned with in this format and really any other. She's come out of the snow in the US to come here. The, the conditions that she's... The change in temperature for her has been remarkable. I know the French have been training in, in heat. Uh, they came in here earlier than any other athlete, so this is a huge run for the title for, for Katie Zafaris. Zafaris was telling me yesterday that to help acclimatise to the heat, she'd do 20 minutes in a hot tub up to her neck and then immediately jump in the water and do 25 metres and then get back in the hot tub and do another 20 minutes and she said she felt like a slug in the water after that much heat but it certainly doesn't seem that way she's had very solid swims if not brilliant but she's been there or thereabouts and across the course of the, course of the stages she has just gotten better and better Ash Channel's got her eyes on a podium finish here in the Eliminator she's just moving up on the only now Rachel Clemmer's counting backwards but I'm I'm eager to see if... No, she's back on for this for Kane. It's not broken. That elastic band's not broken. Do not ride off Cassandra Bogart. No, year. she's got a superb last couple yeah. of hundred metres, but we know that Tafiris has as well. And Rachel Clammer is really putting everything she possibly can into this race to stay in touch and take it to a Ooh. Sunday showdown. That's opened up a little on that back straight. She seems so much stronger, I think, as we go through the turns. Katie's a little bit slower through the turns and uh, she seemed to move up Cassandra Bogram, but on that back straight, just the pure strength of Katie as an athlete is really apparent. She holds her form in the run just so, so well. Looks exactly the same as she's going for a jog than if she's putting it down in front of Cassandra Bogram. She never really loses form, always stands very upright and looks very solid in terms of her running style. She'll finish this one and say, I was shattered during the run, yeah. and you'll go, oh, whereabouts, really? yeah. at what point? She's going to make a left-hand turn. I think Cassandra is going to, as a middle-distance runner, she's used to a kick finish. Here's the left-hand turn, and she's exactly 210 metres from the finish line. Are you telling me that you ran this? No, I just, uh, I heard Vincent Louis. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him looking at the course the other day, prepping for his sprint finish. All right, it looks like Ash Gentle has moved into third position with Lenny Perio just behind and then Rachel Klammer. But it's all down now to Katie Zafiris, who looks like she is going to take the win as she did last time in the Eliminator. She's done it in a different way. Last time we had the Eliminator, she won every stage. This time she's measured her efforts, waited to see, probe for weaknesses. And then when the time came, she has done the job and Katie Zafiris continues on her winning ways and wins the women's eliminator. And that is a huge moment in terms of the championship. Cassandra Bogram finishes second. Congratulations to her. And what a finish from Ashley Gentle to finish ahead of Leone Perio, who's been so consistent. But Ashley Gentle has had some tough swims and fought her way back again and again. And that epitomizes was Rachel Clammer epitomizes Eliminator Racing, the third race matters. Ashley Gentle, who struggled, almost eliminated in stage one, just scraped through in stage two, has finished third overall on the day. Well, you've got to time Summer. your runs, and she's done that. Summer Rappaport comes over the line as well. A very solid performance from her. And the eliminated athletes, there's Aaron Story looking on, and Megan Foley, the Americans, and an embrace between our first and third. Two steps on the podium there. And Taylor Spivey has really gutsed her way to a top 10 finish. And you can see already she's been working on that shoulder. Yuko, Yuko Takahashi. Takahashi comes home as well. She had a very consistent race as well. But in the end, the pace just a little bit too hot. We'll go down right now to Annie Emerson, who has your women's eliminator champion, Katie Zafiris. Well, Katie, this is what it's all about in the Eliminator, saving the best until last, and you did just that. Yeah, uh, as per usual, I built throughout the rounds. I, it was a little intentional and a little just, it got me, got me a bit to get going, but it was nice knowing all I had to do was count down, top, make the top 15, make the top 10, and then go for, go for it in the end. Just tell me, you know how well Cassandra runs, so how did you feel coming off the bike so close with her and she stuck with you? Yeah, so when she came up around me, 
I was like, I was like, okay, try and run on her shoulder. There started to be a gap for him. I was like, just, just get there, get on her back. And then I kind of noticed the difference in her composure and her breathing, and I thought, okay, this is good for me. So I just made sure I stayed there, played it smart, but still, you never know how much of a kick someone's going to have in the end. So once I passed her, I don't know if it was smart or silly, but I just tried to stay ahead of her. You talk a lot about working on mental strength, and I think that paid off today because when it comes down to the final like that with hundreds of metres to go and you've got Cassandra on your shoulder, you've got to stay so strong. Yeah, it was, it's a balance, though, because we do have to race tomorrow and there's no breaks tomorrow, so we'll see what happens. I think, I think surely tomorrow is really the race that you favour most in the Super League Series. I do like it. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you winning here today, Katie, and good luck for tomorrow. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> when you like it, but in a very masochistic way, the Enduro, we cannot wait for that. But coming across the line, we've seen it so many times. Katie Zafiris has just been so strong across the course of this series. And she has one hand now on the championship at 100000 US dollars. And she knows exactly how much that one means. There's been some chat about... Well, it's very hard at this point, I guess, when... Everyone's in a different... You don't know exactly what shape people are in. Some people have raced, some people haven't raced. You don't know exactly how much they've got in the tank at this stage. She spent more time with home case, the Beerus, than usual and came straight here. But she manages to do the job from Bogran and Ashley Gentle, who just had such a gutsy race, as did Leone Perio. Rachel Klammer put everything in for fifth. Taylor Spivey was seventh behind Summer Rappaport. Yuko Takahashi, Emma Jeffcoat, our stage one winner, and Laura Lindemann round out our top 10 and congratulations to all of the athletes for even making it to stage three let alone taking the podium katie cassandra and ashley what an effort from then and we'll head back down now to annie who is uh, around the finish line well not quite in the finish line we're at the, in the paddling pool at the moment with cassandra cassandra a near perfect day's racing but you just got pipped at the last post yeah, it was very hard uh, for the first time of the season. So uh, I tried to, to do a, a, a good race. Katie was so strong on the final run, wasn't she? Yes, she was very strong and uh, I tried to, to stay near her. I think something we noticed today was your bike was strong, so your skills in the technical part of the courts were, was really good today. Yeah, um, the technical... Uh, is my weakness. So uh, on, the, on this winter, I try to to, to work uh, very hard. Okay. We're going to let you cool off, and we'll look forward to seeing you racing tomorrow, Cassandra. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Cassandra. Cassandra Bogran. Sorry, I thought you were at the finishing line. Of course, you're going to go down next to the ice bath because that's where every single one of them are. We saw mountains of ice in the background too, just as the athletes are trying to keep cool and. Let's have a look back now on the top 10 shootout, stage three of the Eliminator. And it was at the beginning, as it was in stage one and stage two, a bit of a swimming lesson for Bo Gran, who had a little slip on the way out of the water. She's so strong in the run, so strong in the swim, and, and so improved in the bike. And that's why she, she led out and was part of a group of five who really gapped the back group and forced Ashley Gentle to work very hard, along with Rachel Klammer, to bridge that gap. And on the way out, she led early. And then as Katie Zafira said, she just got the sense that perhaps Cassandra was starting to blow a little bit hard. And when she saw that little chink in the armor, she went for it. Katie Zafira is such an experienced racer. And she takes 25 round points for her troubles and extends her lead somewhat in the race for the championship. She only needs to finish, let's remind you, seventh or better overall. So barring a huge mishap tomorrow in the Enduro, which she won with absolute dominance the last time we ran this format, she will be your Super League Triathlon champion. But it is far from assured anything can happen in this type of racing. We have the live eliminations tomorrow in the Enduro format with the last two athletes across the line. Each one of the disciplines is eliminated. So if anything goes wrong and she found herself eliminated, all, all bets are off. But... Uh, She's left it right where she did at the beginning, at the end of last season. She's come out to the grand final. She made a huge statement. There was a lot of question marks about her coming out of, uh, out of the colder weather in the U.S. against the athletes that had opted to train in, in, harder, in hotter weather. But uh, she shut those, uh, those concerns down 
today without question. In our scoring system, uh, our top three, I suppose, in order, Cassandra Bograd is an 8.1 in the swim, a 6.9 in the bike, and a 9.3 in the run. So certainly a weakness is the bike. But when you look at Katie Zafiris, 8.1, 8.6, 8.6, so consistent, there is no gaps whatsoever. Ashley Gentle, 7.7 in the bike, 9.4 in the run, 5.7 yeah. in the swim. Oh. So something to work on for both. Bogran and Gentle, but consistency is key, well, and Cady Zafira showed us there. That's the whole purpose behind Super League Racing. It's about highlighting those athletes that do all three disciplines near closest to perfection as possible, and whether we mix those disciplines up, whether you put them first, runs first, runs last, it doesn't matter, and you're seeing Cady Zafira, who is dominant across all three disciplines, shutting down this field time and time again, and she's the gold standard. Won't be long now until the men's race kicks off. It uh, all begins here at uh, 5 p.m. local time, so make sure you check your guides. It's only about 20-odd minutes away, not too far at all. We're going to see the podium for the women as well coming up very, very soon. But a quick look ahead to the men's race as we see some of the youngsters enjoying uh, the family fun zone. Vincent Lewis is our championship leader. He's on 75 of 75 points. There's 50 points on yeah. offer now, and he's 12 points, though, ahead of Henry Schumann. So despite taking... Uh, first, first and first. He has much less of a gap than Katie Zafiris does over the field in the women's because Henry Schumann, the Commonwealth Games gold medalist and Rio bronze medalist, took second, second and second. Yeah. So he's 12 points behind and he is well within striking distance when you consider the 50 points on offer. And those two have been really the two form athletes. If you throw Richard Murray into the mix, and uh, but it's really been Henry Schumann and, and, and Vincent Lewis that have been... Uh, the two athletes that have gone head-to-head -head time and time again, whether that when Henry's escaped in the swim and, and got a grab, gap on the bike and being able to hold him off, mm. it's, it's been the only time we've seen uh, Vincent under pressure. But I, I still go back to the, the last time we saw them in these type of conditions. Uh, Vincent Louis wasn't there. Henry Schumann was in Hamilton Island, and it was Richard Murray, who has yet to lose an eliminator format, I may add, that was the most dominant. He absolutely was. He ran at home. He's got the fastest transition out of everyone, yeah. a 9.2 for that. He ran at home, he's got an 8.2, but he's got an 8.9 on the bike as well. He's 6.1 on the swim, that's what lets him down overall. But if he can swim his way out of trouble, it will, Ashley General showed us that you can do exactly that. But we look forward to that right now though. We have an Australian, a French woman and an American on our podium for the Women's Eliminator. And there they are, your top three. We've managed to recover in time to take the one step onto the podium spray the champagne and enjoy what has been a very, very tough race here in Sentosa Cove. Smiles between Ashley Gentle and Katie Zafiris and Sandra Bogran. Like Ladies and gentlemen, I will throw down now, I think, to our podium. For the Super League Super Saturday Race 3, the final, presenting Mr. Eugene Lee from the Triathlon Association of Singapore in third place and bronze medalist today from Australia, Ashley Gentle. The silver medalist from France, Cassandra Bougrand. And race winner from the United States of America, Katie Zafiris. I'd like to call on Mrs. Ozang Zee from One Degree 15 Marina, presenting the champagne. <laughs> a little bit of a struggle there to get the champagne open, but they do the job in the end.
And, uh, well, Cassandra, everyone but Cassandra has. She's shaking, <laughs> but nothing's coming out. She's doing absolute oh, utmost. There, there we go. Congratulations to all of our podium getters. Ashley Gentle in third. Cassandra Bogran with champagne in her eye in second. And, and Katie Zafiris, your winner of the Women's Eliminator for the second time across the course of the season. And the... Those three will no doubt be a force be in years to come. In the eye, it stings. Yeah, it's well. I, you know, well, I've never been on a podium, so I, you'll just have to. I'll take your word for that. But there you go, uh, top three. Congratulations to all our women. Thank you very much, Chris oh, McCormack. We'll be back very soon with the men's eliminator at 0900 GMT. It's only about 15 minutes away. We cannot wait for that. Make sure you join us here from Sentosa Cove as the Super League Triathlon Grand Final from Singapore continues.
Hello and welcome to beautiful Singapore and to the Super League Triathlon Grand Final taking place in lovely Sentosa Cove. I say lovely because I don't have to race, I can tell you it is hot and humid. We just had the Women's Eliminator. You can catch up on that on superleaguetriathlon.com if you did indeed miss it, but it was a fantastic race. Australian Ashley, Gentle Gutsy run to third behind Cassandra Grogran of France. But no one could stop Katie Zafir as our championship leader, unfortunately, for my guest who I'll introduce in just a second. My name is Will McCloy and I think the name on everyone's lips, though, is another Frenchman, Vincent Lewis. Here we go. There are great seasons and then there are perfect ones. Vincent Lewis, former junior world champ, two-time Olympian, world number two, Sprint King, and in Super League, three rounds, three wins. Consistent, quick, and virtually unbeatable over the last 400 meters. I said in Jersey that when I can see the finish line, it's over for the opponent, and I'm, I'm not a liar. Confident, and why not? Unstoppable so far, and one weekend away from the title of Super League champion. He is the man they are all looking to beat, but he has never won this format. The only format, in fact, that Vincent Lewis hasn't won is the Eliminator. And the man who has won both times we've had the Eliminator is Richard Murray, who is lurking and looking for a podium spot. Alongside me right now, Chris McCormack and Rachel Clammer, the better half of Richard Murray. So before we get to talking about Rich, first of all, you just raced a great and gussy fifth position. How did it feel out there? It looked tough. Well, if I say hot, then everyone will be like, yeah, it, it was very hot, especially the first round. Um, it was even mentally tough because you, the only thing I could think of is, oh, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. But I thought, okay, everyone else is feeling the same and we have to do it twice more. Twice more and then tomorrow we have to do it three times in a row. Yeah, maybe it's better because you don't get that moment to stop and think about the next round. So you just have to keep going. It's like one's off. That is incredibly optimistic from you. I don't know about that. You had breaks today, not tomorrow. I don't see how that's better. Maka, uh, let's talk about Vince Lewis. Yes. He's, he's been a revelation. Uh, he wasn't in the 2017 rounds. He came in, won with a bang in Jersey, and he just kept it rolling. Oh, he's been unstoppable. He roared out of the blocks in Jersey. He was remarkable. We saw him take everyone apart in Malta, and his Mallorca performance was one of the best racing I've seen. He, he seems in very, very good condition. I spoke to him yesterday before today's race. He's uh, primed and ready. He wants to remain undefeated throughout this series. As you said, Richard Murray, the only athlete to ever win the, uh, the Eliminator, and Vincent Louis has never won one. So I'd like to see a, an upsetting of the apple cart going into tomorrow's enduro race, but it looks very, very difficult. This course suits him a lot. It takes a very special man to pull off an owl back tattoo, but he's got one of them, Vincent Lewis. I don't think Rich, Rich has got no tattoos, does he? Not that I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if anyone's going to know, you're going to know. Uh, let's talk about Rich. He's had a little bit of trouble with his ankle, so he hasn't run as much as before, but he's ran his way to two Eliminator victories over the last two years, so he'd still be rather confident, is he? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I try not to talk about it too much. I like to talk a lot about things before the race. He's out, doesn't. But I know he's not 100% sure about what's going to happen today. All right, thank you so much for your time. I know you've just been warming down, so we appreciate you taking the time to join us. Go and warm down, get ready for tomorrow. Thank you very much, will do. All right, it's all about the Eliminator in the men's. It's going to be an absolutely fantastic race. The championship points as they stand. As I said, perfect three rounds for Vincent Lewis, 75 of 75. But we have double points on offer here in Singapore, 50 points. And he's only 12 ahead of Henry Schumer and then Richard Murray, the two South Africans chasing Vincent Lewis home. And here is how it will all work out. If Lewis wins the weekend or comes second, he's the champion. If he finishes third or below and Schumann wins the weekend, which he is more than capable of, Schumann will take the $100,000 in title of Super League Triathlon champion. And Richard Murray and Johnny Brownlee can also mathematically win the title if results fall their way. So it's a little complicated. All the details are on superleaguetriathlon.com, but that's how it works. Schumann finishes first, Vincent Lewis finishes third. The title goes to South Africa, obviously, Next to me, Rachel's hoping that Richard Murray can do it, but his ankle is a little bit sore. We'll see how it works out. Right now, let's have a look at how the Eliminator shakes out. The Eliminator, the most ruthless triathlon format ever devised. A three-stage tactical nightmare rewarding fierce racing and strategic brilliance. Pace your efforts, conserve energy, and avoid elimination. 
No room for positioning error. No room for weaknesses. No room for anything. Stage one, mass start. Swim, bike, run. Easy. A win here, though, won't help you. But finish outside the top 15, that's your day over. For the rest, there is no rest. A 10 minute break and we go again. Mass start, swim, bike, run. Finish top 10 and progress. The other five join their fallen rivals on the sideline. 10 minutes, recover, reset. It's time to go into battle for the last time. How much have you got left? Because someone will cross the line a winner. The Eliminator, it's time. What a test the Eliminator is, and here it is at a glance, three stages, all mass starts, swim, bike, run, and the first 15 go through. That means eight go home after the first stage. A 10 minute break and we go again, swim, bike, run, and then the top 10 head through to stage three. So it's just about qualifying through the first two stages and all on the line in the final stage. Well, things are getting pretty serious down here. The athletes are warming up and there's a feeling of intensity as the athletes prepare for the start of this race. Alongside me, Richard Murray. Richard, you know a thing or two about the Eliminator. You've won two of the, all of them, haven't you? So uh, what does it feel to be racing here today? Uh, it, yeah, it feels very similar to the first race in Hamilton Island. Uh, conditions are very similar. A lot of yachts in the background. Uh, quite a spectacular place and, and great to be here and uh, looking forward to it. Okay, we know your swim slightly lets you down, but you will have been working that over the winter months. How confident are you you can stay on with the likes of Schumann and Van Saint louis um, I can probably stay on as best I can. <laughs> Wish I came from a swimming background, but uh, yeah, definitely been working on it quite hard with, uh, with my coach, uh, Jordi and, uh, and Louis. And uh, yeah, they've been doing a pretty good job in the off-season and uh, looking forward to my first race of, of the season. And look, we know you love this style of racing, but you have been carrying a bit of a foot injury. You're not going to really know until you start racing if it's going to hamper you. Yeah, that's exactly the thing. I mean, I knew coming here already whether I should come or not. So that was already a bit of a difficult call to make. Um, so yeah, I decided to come here and uh, I had to set out the first race of the season due to gastro as well. So this is my official first race of the year and uh, coming in with a bit of ankle injury is not perfect, but I'm going to have to see how it holds up and uh, hopefully I can put out uh, one or two runs at, at least, uh, you know, this weekend. And looking at your other rivals, the other guys up there that we're looking at as favourites to take the overall podium, Vincent Luis, incredibly strong as well. But we haven't seen him yet race this year. In fact, we haven't seen him since Mallorca. So do you know anything about his form? Um, yeah, I mean, he doesn't come to a race underprepared, so uh, he's definitely going to be one to beat today. Uh, but I wouldn't put it out for Henry Schumann either. He, he comes from this type of climate. He grew up in this climate. So it's going to be a tough one between the two of them, I reckon, this weekend. And Johnny Brownlee as well. He's been doing some secret training in Yorkshire, which some people have uh, a bit confused about, but he set up a chamber in his house to stay really warm and train in the heat to acclimatise himself. So he's looking pretty strong too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he spent some time in Thailand as well recently, so he's definitely, you know, prioritising the heat training. And uh, this is uh, definitely like a test event come, come Tokyo as well for the heat. Lovely. Go and get started, Richard. Good luck. Cheers, thanks. Well, I think that if the uh, race is as intense as the heat here in Singapore. We are set for a very exciting afternoon's racing. Beautiful shots over Sentosa Cove here in Singapore. It's started to drop in temperature just a little bit as the men get ready to take on the Eliminator. We just heard from Richard Murray a little while ago. He's very relaxed despite carrying an injury. Dorian Connix is uh, a new name. Another Frenchman, Jonathan Brownlee, we know very well. Matt Hauser is back, as is Ryan Bailey, the two Australians in this number 39. Look out for Ben Canute, too, from Bahrain Endurance. He is so, so strong. Tommy Zafir is fantastic. The Husband of Katie, such a good swimmer, Olympic trialist, Oscar Coggins and Jumpy Furuya too from Japan. But it is packed full of talent, this men's lineup for the Eliminator here at the Grand Final. A straight swim out, 140, two turns and back in and the bike and the run are on the same course. The key element there is the chicane at the bottom of your screen is just outside the W Hotel. There's a few changes of surface as well to contend with. Five laps on the bike, two laps on the run and the Eliminator runs very much like this. Finish outside the top 15, you're gone in the first stage. Finish outside the top 10 in the second stage, you're gone. Top 10 go through and expect to see these guys. The fastest splits from Majorca, Henry Schumann in the swim, Richard Murray on the bike, Jonathan Brownlee on the run, and overall in the pink, Vincent Lewis. 
all those guys very much in contention for podium spots at the end of this weekend and a share of 1.5 million US dollars. Let's get things underway in the men's eliminator. And here we go. A clean start and a good one from, I think, Matt Hauser, is it, in the white on the left. And he's almost going to swim into the end of the, the, the corner of the... Uh, that's, pontoon there. That's uh, Tommy Safaris right next to him, leading out on that right on that left side of screen. And you see Jonathan Brownlee in the red jersey a lot further back on the right of screen. He got a terrible start. He was pummeled just off the off the dive. It's Richard Murray, not renowned for swimming the green and bike riders jersey. And right behind him, Ryan Bailey, who we haven't seen in Super League races since jersey last year. Had a few injuries. It's great to see Ryan back. It certainly is, and there's talent across the breadth of this field. There's no doubt. Henry Schoeman, he is in the blue with the fastest swim. He finished fourth in Cape Town. He was disappointed with that a couple Polyansky. of weeks ago. Polyansky in the centre of screen, a yep. magnificent swimmer. He's been actually training with Richard Murray in, in, in South Africa, so he's, he's made a change to his training regime. He realised after the last two rounds of Super League he had to do something, especially with the Olympics coming. And you can see Vincent Lewis a fair way back. A long way back. This is the furthest back I've seen him at the start of a swim. He started in the centre. He got allocated the centre position, and he's a lot further back. Again, though, as we just have a look at the water temperature, it remains at 29 degrees. It's like a bath in there. The air temperature 31. So certainly, I don't believe that humidity. No, neither do 60%, I. I think it means 160 yeah. percent. If that's only 60 percent, I. 100% the air would be made of water. Yes. Okay. Okay. That seems to be the way it is. So all 191 centimetres of Igor Polyansky, the very experienced 29-year-old Russian, leads around Matt Hauser, who's coming back from hitting a car door last year in May uh, on a training ride in the Gold Coast at a full shoulder reconstruction, but it doesn't seem to be hampering him early on in the swim. At the back of the field is Nathan Killam. You can see that moustache bobbing in and out of the water. He is... Uh, very excited to be here, absolutely, Nathan Killam, and uh, a great addition. Has been racing Ironman races actually in 2018, yeah. so difficult to change to this kind of short, little, sharp racing. Yeah, this is a little bit different, yeah, a, little bit a little bit different. Bit. But Igor Polianski is really, we saw this in uh, in Majorca in the last round. He's in the first race, he starts very, very well. He's got such a good natural speed off the start, and Henry Schumann seems to build into it. We saw... What is that back there? That's on. That's uh, Matt Hauser. Jeez, he always swims well, Matt Hauser. I thought that was Andrea Schilling. That uh, if it is, he's, he's swimming well out of his skin. He's right up near the front. Remember, stage one. It's about staying in that top 15 to move through to stage two, and uh, and staying in the position where you, you don't get brought down in crashes on the bike. You stay out of trouble, and being right where Matt Hauser is right now is the place to be. Absolutely right, Matt Hauser, uh, just behind or on the hip nearly of Henry Schumann, who is swimming on the feet of Igor Polianski, and. Schumann really doesn't have a weakness, if you like. He's worked a lot on his bike. If we had to pick one out, it would be the bike in terms of technicality. But this is a very technical course, and he's a small frame. At the back there, Oscar Coggins and Mark Yu as well from Hong Kong. The pair of them. Oscar Coggins, only 19 years of age. Junior Asian champion, he is, last year. And he surrendered his British passport to represent Hong Kong at Tokyo. But Hauser and Schumann trail Polyansky, Zephyrus, Pearson Lewis, and Dorian Connix. Ben, ben Knuth there. Jonas Schomburg, who probably didn't have the swim he would have liked. Matt, Matt Sharp, Sharp Ryan Wild. Bailey. And there's Richard Murray in the green. And also back there was Hayden Wild, who sits currently in the top six. And he wouldn't have been too happy with that. But a great return to Super League racing for Matt Hauser. And leading out of transition... And through a bit of traffic is Igor Polianski. Good transition also for Vincent Lewis. Ben Kinnan, very slick. Very slick. And there's Richard Murray. He'll need a very, very good transition. And out he goes. That was quick. But Matt Hauser leads from Polianski, Schumann, Vincent Lewis, Zephyrus, Knut, Dorian Connix, and Tyler Mislachuk, who we haven't mentioned, but is always there or thereabouts, from Hayden Wild, who had a great transition ahead of Johnny Brownlee, Jonas Schomburg. And Leo Bergier, that's your top 12. But outside the top 15 as it stands, Oscar Coggins, Mark Yu, Andreas Schilling. Two Schofield twins, Nathan Killam. Yep. Nathan wanted to stay. He's probably the closest he's been. He's not renowned for his swimming. He loved this bike course. As an Ironman athlete, he can tear apart a bike course, but he's just never been able to put himself in position in a draft legal event. Here's a chicane, and the men are hitting it with a lot more risk than we saw in the women's race. Geez, that's tight. It is very, very tight. 
leaving no space unridden on. If that is a phrase. And Ollie Turner at the back of the pack. He'd be happy to have Ryan Bailey in the front there. Ryan will chase. He's renowned for his bike skills. He sees himself as a bit of a bike rider. He'll close that gap. And again, we're looking for the ones at the back because they're the ones in danger of being eliminated in this race, in this stage. It's, uh, it's about nursing yourself through this event, but making sure you're not one of the ones that put yourself in difficulty if anything was to go wrong. A, a collision, a crash, and uh, suddenly we saw that in the, in the women's race with Daniela Di Francesco from first to being eliminated. Coggins, Bailey and Turner all in trouble. There is Schilling ahead of both Jaden and Luke Schofield and Nathan Killam is at the back and working as hard as he possibly can. Matt Houser's back. He, he, he really shone last year in Jersey and it was a tragedy that he got hit by a hit by a car just after his Commonwealth Games gold win on the Gold Coast last year. He was really primed to do really big things within the series. He made a statement finishing last year's race in Jersey right in the mix and uh, it's good to see him back in the racing. Right at the front. So on the bubble, Richard Murray and Jumpy Furuya, the Japanese star. Oscar Coggins in 16th will need to come up a place, as will Ryan Bailey and Ollie Turner. Andreas Schilling, Mark Yu, Luke Schofield in 21st and Jaden in 22nd, both 17 seconds back. It'd be really handy if they could actually not do everything exactly the same, but oh, there you a go. pile up at the back there. A there's pile a crash. up? Yeah, there's a crash at the back. I just saw a whole group go down. It looked like the two Schofield brothers. We'll try and get a replay of that one as Ryan Bailey comes in super fast, followed by Lee Turner, and that is Luke Schofield, who has got some problems with his bike. He's been tangled up, and he is unhappy. Back on the bike, though, ahead of him is his brother, and I think with him is... Was that Matt Sharp? We'll have to yeah, get an update it. on that. It looked like... No, there's Matt Sharp at the back. It wasn't yep. Matt. I can see him just behind Jonathan Brownley. I saw a Canadian flag there, I, I thought. I hope that wasn't Tyler Mishler. Maybe shot. it was Nathan Killam. Ah, uh, yes. No, there's Tyler, he's safe. There's Matt Sharp. Murray in 14th, Coggins in 15th, Bailey in 16th. There is your bubble riders at the moment. Mark Andre you there, Andre Schilling. And there's plenty of work to be done by our back markers, there's no doubt about that. Look at that how Vincent Lewis just slowly slides his way up out of difficulty. We've just had a crash. He's now thought to himself, look, I'm sitting a little bit farther back. I, I don't need to take any chances. You're now sitting second wheel on, on Tommy Zafaris' wheel, which is the best place to be. And now he's on the front. Well, it didn't take long. Vincent Lewis, Matt Hauser, the Frenchman in the Australian lead. Ben Knutz moved his way up into fourth position. Plenty of talent across our top ten. Vince just knows how to put down power out of these corners and need to do that on repeat as they come around turn three. Another sweeping right-hander. The next turn they face will be the Singapore chicane. Ryan Bailey and Ollie Turner looking to stay in touch with that pack. Vince goes back to fourth position, just comes off the gas a little bit and lets Hauser go back to the front ahead of two Americans. into Zafiris and Canute. It's tight through there. It's really very is. tight. As, as it starts to heat up in these later stages, there's going to be a lot of risk taken through there, so it could get quite dangerous. If you, if you watch the way Vincent Louis sits on his bike, he sits very, very high. He looks like a, a cross bike rider if, you, if, you, if you're watching, but he seems to take so many chances. We saw him in Jersey railing those corners, and uh, geez, he's drifted a fair way back in one lap. Has he had a problem? Well, this did happen to him at the bottom of the hill in Malta, and he's gone from first position, yeah. Vincent Lewis, all the way down. So is he having trouble with his gearing? I'm not sure what's happened. Something Heaven happened. forbid it's not a flat, because that'll throw things wide open, it because is Henry Scoobin is sitting there. On. Something's happening to something Vincent happened. Lewis. So his partner, Oof. Taylor Spivey, came off on the bike early on in stage one in the women's race, and now in the men's race, Vincent Lewis, our championship leader, has dropped right down the order. This is danger. Does he ride this flat tire and run himself in? Does he ride the... I think he has a lap to go. He's looking around. He's looking at options. He's going to stop. Is he no? He's talking. He's got a flat. It's definitely a flat tire. He's going to ride a flat. Flat at the back. You can see He's it. just going to keep going. Is that the first flat tire we've had in Super League Triathlon? And it happens to our championship leader in the grand final. That is unbelievable. This throws things right up. Henry Schumann right now must be frothing. He... Uh, He's 12 points back, Henry Schoeman. You get 25 points, round points for today, 25 for tomorrow, and then your total of those round points will lead into championship points worth 50 total.
And at some point, Henry Schoeman is going to see that his main championship rival has got a flat tyre. And it'll come at the end of the run when he comes around in transition for the last time and doesn't see the pink jersey. We've got to do a number count here. Let's see how far back Vincent Louis is. We know he's a remarkable runner. He needs he's to out. stay calm. He's got to be out. He, he has to commit to this Here run. he is. Here he is. He's having all sorts of trouble. It, it happened before that last turn. I was going to say on the last lap, I saw him unclick before the turn. It was as if he was putting his foot down because he uh, it was tight through the chicane. But it's obviously been a flat tyre. So Ben Canute leads One, from Matt two, Hauser. Three, if you, can you count that fast? Because I certainly 11, can't. There's got to be at least 13, 15. 15 is, is Schilling right there on screen. How did you Not do that? You're just I saying just, that with absolute so 16, clarity. 17. He needs to. He knows it. I'll tell you what, this will be a magnificent What a run it's going to be. He's going to run himself through here. There I is think he can do it. I think is, he can do it. If anyone can, it's him. But there is so much on the line. So Mark much on the line. him doing all the work he can. He's got another lap to get through. I thought that was the last lap. Well, that's going to hurt too. So I don't think Schumann knows yet. Because no, if he did, so. you, you would do everything you possibly could to make sure this group got further and further away and made things very, very difficult for Von St. Lewis. They're not sitting up, though. Ben Canute, he only knows one way to ride. Matt House is enjoying his time back, no doubt. Tommy Zafiris is having a great run too. You can hear me. I think 14, 15 is Taylor, is um, Tyler. So, sorry, that's 17th position. So I got it wrong the last count. Right, well, you counted so out loud that. this time like you were six years old. Well, I do that to my son. So that's nice. Night, just to prove that I know how to count. You know we're in commentary, but that's fine. <laughs> so Hauser from Tommy Zafiris now. Canute third, Schoeman fourth. Still doesn't know, you think. Leo Berger in fifth from Dorian Connix. Two Frenchmen in the top five, but the one we're all looking at is not there in Vincent Lewis. And there is Luke Schofield, who has eventually succumbed after that yeah. after that race. And it, we've just heard that the twins, Luke and Jaden Schofield, in fact, crashed into each other. That'll be an interesting discussion at home tonight. Who brought who down? Here's oh, he's Vince Lewis, it. he's still riding, uh, but he's... he's just dropping further and further behind. And I, I'm not I, sure I that know. even Vincent Lewis can know. run it back from there. He only has oh. two laps to do so. I'm looking at these, I don't think so. And that is going to throw it wide open. Wow. So wow. let's recap, double points on offer across this weekend. That means 50 championship points. And Vincent Lewis is 12 points ahead of Henry Schumann. He could drop even further down the order. It's possible that Richard Murray or Johnny Brownlee could take second position. Hayden Wild goes in further down here in transition is Matt Hauser alongside him. Tommy Zafir as those two have been glued to each other the whole time. Hayden Wild first out, Ben Canute, Henry Schumann. It all depends on how, how much these guys commit now. Whether they start counting heads and cruise the run, thinking we're all safe, which allows Vincent Louis to, to commit to a huge run and run some time into them. Oh, surely not. It'll be one of the great runs in triathlon history. There's no urgency. There's no urgency to this group. They're counting heads. It's, it is lucky that it's happened now. It's a, it'll be a monumental effort. Monumental. So, Hayden Wild, Canute, Hauser. Here we go. Vincent Lewis comes in finally after a flat halfway through the bike leg, and he knows he's going to have to run his way into 15th position or better. This will be a huge... It's got to be 30 seconds. It has to be close to 30 seconds, which is... It's near impossible, but uh, if anybody can do it, Vincent Louis can. He has been the biggest runner in the, in the field and over the series. He's, been, he's a remarkable talent. He's got more to lose than anyone else on screen here, and... This is the time where you do pray. There's Tommy Zafaris. I'm doing I think the there's camp. our 15 with Oscar Coggins at the back with so Tyler Mislach. That's the group. He needs to get to that group. He needs to get on. Murray, I think, is in 11th position. Zafiris oh, in 12th. Bailey, Mislach, yeah. and Coggins, which puts Schilling in 16th position. And we're looking for Vincent Louis now. Yes. There's Mark Yu. There is plenty of looking back and forth. All right, at the front is Wild. He looks very comfortable, Hayden yeah, Wild. He does indeed. He is the New Zealand mixed team relay champ after a great race last weekend. So great that they had to go back and check his times to make sure he wasn't cheating. They thought he was so fast, but of course he was not cheating. Here it is. Here, oh, he, yep. there it is. There, geez, he kept that up, right? 
Yeah, he slipped out at the back, and you can see already the wheel. The tyre is done, and he's looking back thinking that could be it. And there is Vincent's partner, Taylor, who herself had a very tough race, but managed to make it through into the top ten after an accident on the bike. So There's no urgency in this group up front, and that's a positive for Vincent Lewis. They just seem to be quite controlled. Hayden Wilde on the front, Ben Canute. Henry Schumann in the blue jersey, Jonathan Brownlee looking very, very comfortable. Matt Hauser in the centre. At this point, Henry Schumann must have had a look around and realised that there's no pink jersey. He knows. So he needs to wonder whether the rest are going to come with him if he kicks on and tries to make sure that Vincent Louis doesn't... I suppose there's people behind them that aren't going to go with them regardless, so really it's not going to make all that much of a difference. We're just looking at the group Vincent, of 11 there. Vincent Lewis doesn't care what's happening up front. He cares what number 15 is doing. That's his spot to the next stage. It's all that matters. There's 15 people on screen as far as I can tell. With a group of uh, 11 there, including Murray at the back. And a further three, four, with Tommy Zafiris and Oscar Coggins. That's and then in, on the bubble is Andreas Schilling yeah. in 16th position. So... Vincent Lewis is looking at Andreas Schilling and we'll find out now exactly how far behind he is. Nine to Sharp. And I think, uh, I think Henry's just gone, you know what? I may win this Schilling, in fact, is in 15th position. Yes, that's right. Yes. So Zafiris has dropped back through the pack after a fantastic swim and a good bike as well. And Andreas Schilling wearing the double zero on his back. He's in 15th position and 12th back. We're not seeing a 16th position for a while, so those seconds are adding up. We've just got to subtract, and this is where our math comes. Schofield's in between so, Skilling and, and Jumpy. So it's over 25 seconds. It, it is, is, in fact, 30 seconds flat and one lap to go. You think Oof. that Vincent Lewis can't get back 30 seconds, but I've seen stranger things, not many. But if anyone can do it, it's Vince Lewis. There he is. He's Polianski drifted a lot further back. He, he, he was right in that front group, led the swim out, and now he's behind Vince Lewis. He's ridden the entire bike right on a flat tire. Great run there from Matt Sharp as well, who stuck with his pack the whole way. Ryan Bailey and Oscar Coggins as well, the 19-year-old. Tyler Misterchuk's always there or thereabouts. And all of these guys are safe at this point. And you can see, well, we would have just seen the gap back. But Henry Schumann, well, he looks in supreme form, doesn't he? He's so meticulous in his preparation. As I said, finished fourth in Cape Town behind another alumni from Super League Triathlon, Alex Yee, the great yeah. the Brit who really has announced himself in a big way. He comes from 10K running. He's so fast on the run. Trains on his own, Henry Schumann, with his dad, Joe. A little bit different to a lot of the others who train in teams under coaches, but him and his dad, Joe, training back in South Africa. 27-year-old. His run has been fantastic. We've seen him run his way to some famous victories over the last couple of years. Henry just loves to sit on the front. He, he's, he's such a front runner. He's, he's got such a big swim. He gets out in front. He feels comfortable. He just seems to relax in his running form when he's on the front. He, he doesn't sit in a group as comfortably as, say, a Johnny Brownlee, who, who tends to feed off the energy of the group. But Henry likes to be in that position he is right now. He's looking at $1,000 if he wins Well, the stage. no, he's not. I think someone's coming down the I inside at quite a pace. I'll, I'll put a bet on the table. <laughs> he, loved, he loved the $1,000. Yeah. <laughs> he took it to the top of the hill in Malta as well. But... That'll be a nice shot to put on Jaden Schoenberg's no, wall. It, it's 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 Schomburg, Jonas Schomburg. Good on you. Jonas Schomburg, he'll take the thousand dollars thanks to a nice kick there. Unless he has a trip or something equally as Jonas Schomburg. Unlucky, but Jonas Schomburg, the 24-year-old qualifier from Poznan, he's an emotional racer, he puts it all on the line and he wins the stage from Schumann, Brownlee, Wild, Knut, Connings. On to Boo in Super League from Matt Sharp, Matt Hauser, Leo Berger, Richard Murray. And by the look of it, Vincent Lewis is out. is out of the Eliminator. That is Super League racing. One mistake, one piece of bad luck. And he wasn't too far back either in the end. Yeah. Well, there's Jaden Schofield, but Vince was right behind Jaden a minute ago. And I don't know whether he's just stopped there. There, there he is. is. Big run. 
And that's incredibly unlucky for Vince Lewis, who stuck with it and gave as much as he possibly could. Very, very tough Man. for our championship leader. A bit of bad luck, and it looked like he was going to have perhaps the perfect season. And Nathan Killam is unlucky as well. And Igor Polianski, he's been so fit. As you said, he's been yeah. training with Rich. Richard Murray himself, we had him on the show earlier, said he was just... He was fit and he was ready, but he had a little bit of a problem and some niggles, and maybe that's what hurt him in the end. And speaking of hurt, oh man, Vince that, Louis, what a tragedy! What a day. You wonder what right now Henry Skuman's thinking. You see him in the background in the blue jersey. He's just gone straight back to business. He's such a professional, but suddenly you'd be rubbing your hands together, thinking, "Wow, a bit of luck has fallen my way, and the championship is up for grabs. I can win this." I would never in a million years have picked that Vincent Lewis would be eliminated in the first stage of eliminator. All right, a little trip to the ice baths for Johnny Brownlee and the rest of those who need to go again. But right now, let's head down to Annie Emerson, who is with our very unlucky championship leader. Thanks, John. I'm so sorry. There's nothing more I can say. It's racing, right? There's not a lot you can do about it. Yeah, but that's... I would say that's for all, that's not Matt. Uh, good thing I'm not good at Matt and better at sport. But <laughs> that's it, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for Henry. He, he will got the overall. Uh, I can now rest for tomorrow. Trying to have a good race. I need to check what happened to my tyre. It was a brand new tyre. Uh, yeah, I, I don't want to say anything, but I will check what happened to my bike before races. In my car already had a chain drop. It never happened to me. That's the first flat in 15 years of triathlon. Wow. So I will keep an eye on my bike next time. Okay, you need to keep an eye on your bike, absolutely. But but sometimes it can happen, right? The tyres can overheat, or maybe you picked up something on the road. Yeah, I think that's the only flat in the World Super League since, uh, since Jersey. So, we see. Okay, if nothing else, you win the award for the best bike handling skills because that was something else, how you took that bike around the course. Yeah, I just need to call my sponsor to send me a brand a brand new rear wheel because I think I destroyed this one. But, yeah, it was fun. Like, like an attraction park with the, with the curve. So, okay, I, I, I had some fun, but it's fine. It's fine. Okay, that's that's on. We're really, really sorry. But we'll look forward to seeing you in great shape for tomorrow's yeah. race. And no punches. Yeah, that's it. I, I will do my best tomorrow. Try to conserve. I don't know what I can hold. Three or fourth, but it doesn't really matter now. Sorry. No worries. Okay. Cheers. As quick as well, that hurts. It that certainly does. And this is where it happened to just a little bit too much power, perhaps, put the back wheel out. And that was the end of that. You can see already uh, it's not tracking like it should, that back tyre. And as he said, brand new tyre, first puncture in 15 years of triathlon. And it could not have happened at a worse moment for Vincent Lewis. And that is how easily championship results can be thrown into disarray and the man who stands to capitalize the most is Henry Schumann he's with Annie Henry okay so the big news of the day your closest rival the guy that was ahead of you in the rankings is out of today's racing what do you have to say about that yeah I'm actually really gutted I mean I, I can really feel for him uh, there's a lot on the line and to have a puncture in the first race is uh, devastating so I really feel bad for him and it's not the way that, if, I, if it turns out that I win the race in the series, it's not the way that I wanted to. I mean, I really wanted a good battle with him, but um, I hope he comes back tomorrow and I hope he comes back angry. Yeah, I mean, he was really disappointed. He said that it's the first time it's ever happened in, in Super League racing, so he was a bit shocked that he picked up a puncher. Yeah, um, it's really un bad luck, but um, yeah, I feel for him, but I'm going to focus on my own racing. Uh, there's still a lot of good athletes out here. Uh, that could still beat me, but um, you know, just going to focus and hopefully I can perform. I have to say, you, you look very controlled and, and relaxed out there. Was it as easy as you made it look? Um, I try to go in easy as possible, but uh, it's, it's hot out here. Um, it's just only going to heat up even more over the next two races. Okay, good luck for the next race. What an absolutely yeah. outstanding answer from Henry Schumann. That's exactly question. the kind of answer Without you want. Question from a man who loves his racing. Here is our eliminated athletes. Unfortunately, the Schofields ran into each other. We, we've talked about Vincent Lewis, Nathan Killen left it all out there. Igor Polianski had a great swim. Jumpy for a year as well. Uh, debutant from Japan and another debutant, Mark Yu from Hong Kong, found the going tough, as did Oli Turner from Jersey. And he's been a great addition, of course, across this Super League season. But 
Those men go home. There are eight of them and 15 go on to stage two. Let's have a look back at how it all shook out in the opening stage and there was plenty of action all the way through the pack. It was a nice clean start. Matt Hauser got a great start alongside Tommy Zafiris in the middle of the pack. It was a great swim as well from Igor Polianski and he led into the first boy and around as they turned for home as well. There was plenty of chopping and changing in the middle there as Schumann fought with Hauser for second position and to find the feet of Polianski. In the end, it was Schumann that found those feet, but it was a nice swim all round. Polianski was out of the water first and Schumann and Hauser came out together ahead of Knut. Onto the bike they went for five laps. There were some great transitions there and Hauser came out first from Polianski, Schumann, and then we saw Vincent Lewis there in fourth position ahead of Tommy Zafiris, who had a great swim. The Schofields tangled with each other. We know they like to do things together, but that was a little too much together. And then a little slide out of the back there. We know those pavings can be a little bit slippery, even in the dry. And there was three laps with a flat tire for Vincent Lewis, who guts it out and nearly ran his way back, but it was a bridge too far. Instead, Hayden Wilde let out the run. He looks to be in great form, as do all the men you can see in your picture. Jonas Schomburg in the end was the winner, but it was the story all about Vincent Lewis. Schomburg takes the yellow tape from Henry Schumann, Jonathan Brownlee. They all quickly get 10 minutes to recover and cool down in the ice bath, but there is Vincent Lewis and that hurts, absolutely hurts. So the stage results for the first Stage of the Eliminator. Schomburg takes the thousand US dollars for winning the stage from Schumann, Brownlee, Wild, Canute, your top five. Matthew Sharp raced well into sixth position ahead of Dorian Connix. Matthew Hauser is back in a big way from Leo Berger and Richard Murray will head back down to Annie, who's been very busy and she's found Jonathan Brownlee. Johnny, you did what you had to do there, but that was some chaotic times on the bike out there. Uh, yeah, it's the first race, and everyone's a little bit nervous and tense and I got it battered in the first rim, so I was quite far back, and then uh, you're quite far back on the bike then, and uh, yeah, it's a bit harder than I wanted to go. Just a quick one, how are you feeling ahead of the next race? Uh, tired, but I hope everyone else is tired, but uh, hopefully I'll get better as it goes on. Great stuff, good luck. Thank you. That is the Olympic silver medalist from Rio, Jonathan Brownlee has one of the best resumes in the sport, of that there is no doubt, and there is so many good and qualified triathletes on that pontoon. If you're just joining us, the Eliminator, tenacity is key. Three stages, 10 minute breaks in between, 23 start, swim, bike and run. The top 15 only go through to stage two after a 10 minute break. Same again, swim, bike and run, and then five go home and 10 go on to stage three. You do not have to finish first in stage one or two, just conserve your energy and give it all in stage three. This is stage two right now. 15 athletes. Henry Schumann will be, obviously, as he said, gutted that his main championship rival, Vincent Lewis, is not there after that flat tyre, but it's a bit of a let-off for him. He needs to capitalise now, refocus. Don't worry about that and focus on doing well here, getting to stage three and winning that race to maximise his advantage. But there are plenty of men between him and a race win. And Vincent, Look, Vincent Louis right now will be looking at this result, with these races now, these stages, with absolute eagerness. Yeah, it's not all over. You've got Jonathan Brownlee now, who is in good form. We saw him go to war with Vincent in uh, in, in Mallorca in the last in the last round. He seems to be in good form, and if he can put Henry Schumann back, Vincent's still in this. So, uh, well, if it'll be can, interesting. If Richard Murray or Johnny Brownlee can have a big race win here in stage three. They keep their hopes of winning this whole thing very much exactly. alive. Exactly. We would never have imagined coming into stage two of the Eliminator that we'd be talking about Vincent Louis not being on the podium in the overall championship series. It could be. Anything could be as we head into stage two. A great start from furthest from us, Henry Schumann in the blue. On his feet is Matt Hauser. Of course, the pontoon spot's decided by the finishing places in the previous stage. So, Schumann's decided to take the further spot, now closest to us as we cross to the other side. Tommy's a fair Matt Hauser is think. behind him, yes, on the very far side. Yeah, I think that is Tommy Zafiris, who was, as we say, an Olympic trialist in the swim and got a berth in 
Let me get this right. Mallorca, by virtue of swim a fantastic time swim time trial time in Malta, we gave him a start and said if you can make it into the top five of the swim time trial, we'll give you a crack in the next round, and he did exactly that. The husband of our women's championship leader, Caddy Zafiris, who had a win earlier on in the women's eliminator. Looks like Tommy's got a straighter line to the front to that first swim boy. If you look, Henry's gone a very a lot further to the left, and we'll be interesting to see who hits that first. Johnny Brownlee's opted to go on the Henry Schumann side. He's sitting in about fifth in the red in the red jersey, but Tommy has nailed that. It looks to be a lot better. You see Henry now yes. starting to tack back across. Schumann is. Known for, I've seen him before have a very wobbly swim. He's very, very fast, but he can go <laughs> offline from time to time. It's just that he's so fast he usually gets back online and still yeah. leads to the first boy, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Tommy will have that inside line on the boy, so, but he's been beaten by Henry. In uh, Beijing last year at the Beijing International Try, I think he hit a kayak who was off course and then kept going, still won the swim by quite a length. Ben Canute in third in the silver jersey. What a wonderful swimmer he is. He's, he's probably the, we talk about him a lot. He's got the best range within the sport. We saw him finish fifth place in the Ironman 70.3 championship, which is a, a four hour race. Um, and when, when you're doing 18 minute races like you are now, to be this close to the front shows the caliber of athlete you are. Three time national champion and Olympian Ben Canute of the USA. We haven't talked about him much, number 75, training in Arizona. So he's used to the heat, got engaged to his lovely fiance Courtney over the summer break so there's a there's a couple people who got engaged or married that's that's what you have to do if you're a triathlete you have to do all your personal stuff that's over it. christmas because yeah. it's the only time you've got henry henry loves his position we see him a lot in 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 the triple mix we saw this in particular in in jersey we had the short shoots there but he gets out of transition he gets out of the swim very very quickly he sets up that clear water very fast for a transition onto the bike likes to get those clean runs and uh and sets it up he's such a magnificent runner and as richard murray insinuated in his interview these are the conditions that he grew up in he loves hot humid conditions he's from durban in south africa and uh he just seems to thrive in it but it's definitely cooler than it was for the women's race yeah i think it's gone down a good couple of degrees yeah. from the women's race and there's a breeze out there now which is certainly going to help as they swim past chris mccormack's boat there at the middle of your screen at the top yeah I'm trying to sell it if anyone wants it it's theirs <laughs> But I, I was interested to see Johnny Brownlee. He said in the first race he had a terrible swim and had a bad start. He seemed to be a bit further back again than we've seen him before. You see them in the centre of the screen. That's Johnny. Henry Schumann, though, out of the water, has a quick look around and sees Tommy Zafiris right behind him. And Ben Canute, who's wearing the silver by virtue of having the quickest transition times over the course of the season. Tyler Mislachuk in better position ahead of Matt Hauser. A big slip there from Jonas Schomburg, who won the last round, the last stage, if you like. Aiden Wild out of the water as well, but there's a good spread across our top 15 as they head into transition for the first time in stage two of the men's eliminator. The grand final here in Singapore of Super League Triathlon, 1.5 million US dollars on Matt the Hauser, line. a bad swim, a long way back for Matt Hauser. For Matt Hauser, I was talking of him as a swimmer. He's a long way back. I would, I would expect to be a lot closer to the front. That's the worst I've seen him swim in the series. I don't know if he went a little bit too hard in that first one. Well, you know, it's pretty start. hard for him. He's only his second swim of the series, and you just called him worst you've seen in the of series. Course, he, he, He's only been in Super League for uh, 20 minutes. To me, Matt Hauser is, is one of the best swimmers in the sport of triathlon, and to see him, what, five back here is just... Yeah. Well, Richard Murray currently in 13th position. There he is in the green, and knowing he needs to finish inside the top 10, and he's one of our championship contenders as well. So things starting to look easier and easier for Henry Schumann and potentially Jonathan Brownlee, but we'll see how it checks out across the course of this stage. The top 10 go through. Henry Schumann leads from Canute and Zafiris. That's your top three. A little gap back to Tyler Mizlachuk, who's having a much better race, the Canadian, and then five seconds or so to Hauser. Sharp and Wild who lead and Richard Murray. Oh, great through that. Well, so good. Andreas Schilling. He's Dorian Connex. He's the under, junior and under 23 world champion from 14 and 15. One of the best in the French. He won the world championships and one of the favourites to make that powerful French team for the Tokyo Olympics and to win that gold medal in that mixed team relay. Well, the French won the world champs gold in Hamburg in 2018. They also won the European champs gold in the mixed team relay as well. He's the 2017 French sprint champion. He knows how to go fast, and he's going to need to because the pace is getting set by these guys. Mislachuk's having a bit of a lonely race at the moment in fourth position. Trains with John O'Hall and the multi-sport brain team. 
in Arizona. And a big win, Ms. LeChuck at the top of the hill in Malta in the second stage of that eliminator, if you remember. And that really was a big boost in confidence. I know that because he shares the same photo of him winning on Instagram about once a week. <laughs> Canute, five minutes and 42 seconds into this second stage ahead of Scoob and Zephyrus and Ms. LeChuck four seconds back. Just sitting off the back, he hasn't been able to tack on the back of that of, of Andrea Sealing and, and make his ride through this loop a lot easier. He's just been chasing, 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 and that really stinks the legs. So, with a little gap open with the elimination of Vincent Lewis, Henry Schumann is intent on leading this one from the front ahead of two Americans, Ben Canute. Signed with Barrett Endurance, they only signed the best of the best ahead of Tommy Zafiris. Tommy's got a free ride here, he's not, hasn't got the big run, and if he can let these guys pull him away, he gets to coast through, remember, top ten through to the, the stage three, and you've got some powerhouse runners back here that are going to eat into his lead, so the margin of error for Tommy Zafiris is, is important. Wild, Berger, Sharp and Brownlee are in that chasing pack from fifth through to eighth, but there is our top three. Having a little bit of a discussion, having a look back as well as Schoeman tucks in behind Canute. I love the way Ben Canute races. He really leaves nothing out there. He may not have the most economical, I suppose, running style or biking style, but he muscles his way around and he does it, as you say, in formats ranging from super sprint through to 70.3. But he, he knows that his run, if he has a weakness, it's his run. So this margin of error for him, he's committed here. And he races with his heart. He's just totally gritty. He puts it all on the line. We saw him in, in Mallorca on the climb, just go top to bottom. And unfortunately, a back injury put him out there. But it's a, it's a statement he's going to make. He wants to get through the final. There's Vincent Lewis. Oh, that oh, is the pain face from Vincent Lewis, who is seeing his perfect season slip away right in front of his eyes. Can't help but feel for him. He's such a gentleman, Vincent Lewis. He's been the star of our series since coming on in Jersey this year. And nobody wants to see that. Dorian Connick's finding the going tough. But at the moment, it's Canute and Tommy Zafiris who had a great bite in the first stage in the top three and then fell back down the order in the run knows he needs to put himself right up there if he's going to make it through to stage three this time he finished a very credible night on Dubu yeah. in Mallorca and he needs to give himself as much space on the run as he can Leo Berger just closed that gap just for sheer bike handling skills he tore through that chicane and came out the other side he was he went from 10 meters to about three and a half to be on the back of that front group I think he's closed the right down he has that was pure bike handling skill to close that gap. There was no increase in effort. He just took a lot of chances, spread it out, got through the chicane, and we saw that gap just immediately eliminated. We are shaping up to have a very, very interesting race for the top 10, because as you can see, there's 10 riders there, and then behind them, Richard Murray, and then behind that, Matt Hauser. So 13 in our lead pack, as far as I can tell with Ryan Bailey sitting off the back with Matt Hauser and joining them, Andrea Schilling. And it will be a big run, 1,800 metre run to the line. The top 10 go through. Here they are right now, Berger in fourth, Mislachuk fifth from Hayden Wild, the two-time Xterra under-19 world champ from New Zealand. One of the future stars of our series, of that there is no doubt. Jonathan Brownlee, Matt Sharp, Jonas Schomburg and Oscar Coggins who's having quite the day out from Hong Kong. Is he what? He's been racing a lead as well as juniors, the 19-year-old. Ray on the leg, Asian Cup earlier in January, actually. He finished fifth. Cycling is, without a doubt, his strongest discipline, Oscar Coggins. Finished sixth in the junior ITU Grand Final on the Gold Coast at the end of last year, so he's having quite the run at it. As he sits among the best the sport has to offer. Andrea Schilling on the back of a pack of 13. And Canute, he's been on the front of this bike since the beginning. He's done a lot of work. That gap's been closed. Johnny Brownlee looks very, very composed today. He said he felt average in that first race, but he stayed right up where he needs to be. Tactically very, very clever. He's shadowing Henry Schumann, who he knows is going to be right near the front. And, uh, 
Well, it'd be, it'd be magnificent. We saw in, in, in Majorca, Johnny out, out, totally outrun Henry Schumann. So it's not over for Henry. And, and if Johnny could put him out of the equation, Vincent Louis would be rubbing his hands together. back there. Andreas Schilling has just been dangling off the back. He stayed close. He needs to stay close. This is the last lap. Hayden Wild center of screen. Johnny Brownlee very, very focused. So just an update on the championship standings. As a stand, as a stood came and coming into this weekend, Vincent Louis would have it wrapped up if he finished in the top two. If Schumann won the weekend. So now, if Henry Schumann wins the weekend and he's looking good, sitting in fourth position at the moment, he needs to obviously win this or come very close and have a great enduro tomorrow. But if he takes maximum points and wins the weekend and Lewis is outside the top two, Henry Schumann is champion. So now it's very unlikely that Vincent Lewis will finish inside the top two for the weekend. Therefore, if Henry wins the weekend, he's 99% sure he's going to win the whole thing. So win right. this round, win the championship. So if you're Vincent Louis right now, in the utmost respect, you're barracking for everyone but Henry Skinner. 100%. 100%. So you're looking at Hayden Wild, you're looking at Jonathan Brownlee, you're looking at Ben Knut, you're looking at everybody that put their B finish in front of Henry Skinner to take those valuable points away. Henry's aware of that. So Henry will know if he can win this weekend, he's pretty much got it in the bag as they come into transition and head out onto the run. So this is a 120,000 US dollar weekend for Henry Schumann and if you do triathlon you'll know how much money that is in this sport. And we have two laps on the run, Hayden Wild first in the transition, needs a good transition as do all of these men knowing that some of them are going to miss out. Great Wild transition. out first and he's hit Ryan Bailey's bike so that's not going to help him at all. Ryan Bailey, no doubt they'll have a discussion about that this evening. Schumann third, Sharp fourth, Zephyrus in fifth. Now he didn't have a great run, Tommy Zephyrus. He's not renowned for his run. Tyler Misler, Chuck Leo Berger, Schomburg, Brownlee, Murray, Hauser, Coggins, Schilling, Bailey. Four of these men will not yes. go on to stage three. And at the moment, Matt Hauser, Oscar Coggins, Andreas Schilling, and Ryan Bailey are those four. Although Hauser is quite close to Berger and he's just overtaken Tommy Zephyrus. So Zephyrus drops into the danger zone. Oscar Coggins at the back there in 12th position. Love to see him go through to the yeah. final stage. He's done a lot of work. He deserves it. But out the front, the Hayden Wild. The Falcon. Hasn't he been the real find of Super League racing? He's just come into his own. He's matured as an athlete. Everybody within the series has taken him on board. They love him. Uh, you know, talking, you, you think of the Hayden Wild that came to Jersey, the starstruck young New Zealander, who's now one of the true stars of our race. And uh, I would go... He could win this. He could win this round. He's been in such good form. He seems very confident. His whole family's here to watch him race, and uh, he's racing with intensity and eagerness. I met his grandparents yesterday. They are humongous Hayden Wild fans. They are enjoying every minute of their grandson's rise to prominence. Is Schomburg again, who won stage one, pushing to the front. This is the best we've seen Jonas Schomburg during the whole entire league. I, I absolutely agree. He's always threatened yeah. to uh, bust it open, but this certainly seems to be us watching that right now. Jonas Schomburg, who already got stage one in the bag, now leads stage two. He's always been an excellent swimmer. He's got all the arsenal that he needs now. But just to, to hark back to Hayden Wild, you see there in second position, the moment I feel like he really realised that he could mix it with the best was that sprint with three-time and reigning oh, yeah. world champion Mario Mola down the straight in Jersey. He'd only just won his third world title the week prior. And here comes young Hayden Wild from New Zealand. Absolutely no respect for titles and uh, <laughs> outkicked him. He then outkicked Johnny Brownlee and Malta. 
He's been right there. Stage, he won a stage. <laughs> he's, uh, he's been a real shining star of the series. So Oscar Coggins has fallen off the back there, and Tommy Zafiris is finding the going tough at the front. It's Schomburg from Wild. It's good to see Richard, Brownlee. Richard Murray on the back there. His foot was a concern, but he seems to be staying very, very close. He's, he's survived, and he will survive into the final round. Let's not forget that Richard Murray has won every Eliminator we've ever put yeah. on. He won in Hamilton Island in our test event in 2017. He won again in Malta just three months or four months ago. He said he's done eight days of eight days of run training. If that's what eight days of run training can run with this group, <laughs> that's talent. He's looking back counting numbers. One lap to go. Andreas Schilling at the back there. Matt Hauser as well is in danger because there is nine men in that group. Schilling is 10th. Schilling's 10th, so Matt Hauser sitting at 11th. He has Does to get Schilling. Look. Yeah, I, I said that with his swim. He's usually a lot faster out of the blocks in the swim. And I know he's fourth or fifth out of the water, but Matt is, is, is renowned for his power swimming, his quick transitions. Oh, Leo Bergier. Have a look there on the right of your screen. Leo Bergier's not wearing any shoes. Look at that. Did he lose his shoes? Is that a, is that a tactical decision? Interesting. He's, he's, he's going to be feeling it tonight, there's no doubt about it, but is there a... on the way home, on the home straight, he's running on the grass verge to try and help himself. I've never seen that before. Let's hope he hasn't lost his shoes, otherwise there's going to be a conspiracy theory against the French in this race because we've lost Vincent Louis with a flat tyre in the first one. The last thing we need to do is see, which I don't think we will, Leo Bergier have lost his shoes. I'll tell you what, both of them have shown incredible yeah, grit. Without question. To He's going to run around here, Leo Bergier, and if all goes to plan, arrive in stage three. And Vincent Louis rode three laps with a flat tyre and didn't give up and tried to run his way home. So Richard, Richard Murray pushed himself straight through that chicane, straight into the front. Well, he knows how to do the job in the Eliminator, we know that, and there is Matt Hauser trailing Andreas Schilling, so he just needs to cover that gap. Matt Hauser, who the 20-year-old has... Oh, there's Leo Bergi on the grass. Yeah, on the grass, there you go. So it obviously was not a choice to run in bare feet. He has lost his shoes. You don't, you don't opt for bare feet when you're looking for grass. He's lucky that uh, Singapore is just about the cleanest country in the entire world because there is nothing on the ground there yeah. that's going to stick into his foot, we hope. But there you can see him running on the grass. And he's... Oh, I just... So you thought he was going to hurt over that. <laughs> Jeez, Richard Murray. Eight days of run training, he told us, prior to the women's event. He's put himself right in. He stayed close in the first stage. He's now leading stage two. And uh, maybe he's taken a... Runners. You know, with Vincent Louis out, Vincent Lewis out, he's, he's right in the hunt here to finish on the podium. This is what Super League Triathlon Racing does to you, though. You have to be absolutely on point. Maybe he couldn't find his shoes, Leo Berger. He had to push a little bit hard, Vincent Lewis, and the cracks can sometimes show. We've seen people go out on the run with their helmet on. We've seen yeah. people on the bike with their running shoes on. We've seen all sorts of things as we up the ante at Super League Triathlon and punish any errors. And Matt Hauser, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to do the job and cross that gap. He's put it all in. You can see it on his face. And here we are for stage two. We're waiting for them to come around the corner. Who's got the kick? That is the big question. Richard Murray, Richard Murray is streeted them, and he will take a stage two win and a big boost for Richard Murray ahead of another South African schoolman. Brownlee comes in third. Wild. Schilling did well there and Sharp as well. Schomburg, Berger, and Matt Hauser really pushed up there at the end, but just wasn't quite enough. Leo's gone straight to the tub, so he's not looking for his shoes. He's gone straight to the ice tub, but... Ryan Bailey comes home, and Tommy Zafiris as well. Great effort from Tommy Zafiris after joining late the series. And that's Michael Thompson going, mate, do you, do you realise you didn't have your shoes on? The race director wondering exactly what happened. We'll try and get to the bottom of that during the 10 minute break as we count down to stage three where it will be all on the line. Let's hope the technicality of not wearing shoes. We go down to Annie, we can see her shouldering her way through to Richard Murray, so we'll throw down right now. Richard, we thought you were going to have problems on the run, but you showed us otherwise. 
Yeah, I was thinking, you know what, $1,000 is better than $0,000. So, yeah, I know, my ankle was hurting, but I thought, you know, if I go now, I can get 1000 bucks and, uh, yeah, at least show myself and have some good fun here today. Okay, out of 10, how much was the ankle hurting, really? Well, I don't know, I don't like to, I don't like to milk it, but probably about a 7. But you have... Or a 7, but, yeah, I'm happy with that. And you're happy to go through to the next race yeah, without any problem? Yeah, I'll see how it hang, handles in the last run, but, yeah, I just want to be careful. <laughs> And what are your thoughts on the race so far? The, the bike looks frantic, right? Yeah, no, the bike. Sorry, I'm climbing up there. Oh, the bike, the chicane down there is extremely tough. It's bottled neck and it really slows down. So if you're at the back, you really suffer. So on the run, even on the run, you suffer. So I decided to go on the S-Bend on the run and uh, yeah, picked up some cash, which is always nice. Now you just got to hang on for the swim because you're down to 10 athletes and this is the sore point for you, right? Yeah, I thought if I got to the last round, I'd be very happy with it. And after the first round today, it was pretty sore and I'd loosened up, so just got to be careful. Okay, great stuff. Good luck, Cheers. Richard. Thank you very much. A thousand US dollars to Richard Murray. So congratulations to him. He found the pace when it mattered and he's saying that he's not that confident about his ankle, but I wouldn't be surprised if he runs this one home and wins the Eliminator. Matt Hauser, disappointed, obviously. Johnny Brownlee, the Olympic silver medalist and the bronze medalist as well from he looks London. Very, he's looking very, very comfortable yeah, and composed. He he's got that bounce back in his step and anything can happen. A couple of Aussies, 11th and 12th, Matt Hauser and Ryan Bailey both rejoining our series after Jersey 2017. Tommy Zafiris, uh, again, a great swim, a great bike. His run let him down. He finished 13th ahead of Oscar Coggins, who's had a great weekend thus far. And Dorian Connix found time a little bit tough there at the end. We're going to head down now again. Oh, uh, we're not going to head down again. It's an ever-changing scenario down there in... Um, in the, the ice bars, I guess. Yeah. It reminds me of the Mickey Mouse ice bars we had in uh, in Hamilton Island. We'll look back across the course of the uh, second stage. We were going to hear from Leo Berger, but he needs a little bit of attention, I think, medically first, and we'll wait for that. Uh, no doubt he's just run two kilometres in bare feet, so fair enough. A nice start from Henry Schumann, who went perhaps a little bit offline and gave himself a little bit more work to do, along with Matt Hauser as well, who followed him out, along with a few others. But he still hit the turn boy first. Tommy Zafiris slotted in second and had a very similar stage, if you like, to the one he had uh, to open this men's eliminator. Ben Canute, number 75, came out third ahead of Tyler Mislachuk, who had a better swim, and it just shows you a good swim can really help. A little bit of a slip from Jonas Schomburg, amongst a few others, including Hayden Wild. And there was Matt Hauser at the back of your screen. He found going tough because if you don't have a good swim, it just shows you with this course the way it is, just how much that can punish you. Mislachuk in fourth position. Our top three held on for a couple of laps before. Some great bike from Leo Berger helped cover that gap. Really quick off the bike, Hayden Wild was coming into transition as they went out on the run in stage two. Hayden Wild was out first. A little bit of a crash with Ryan Bailey's bike. Didn't stop him though. And Schomburg led for a time, as he did in stage one, as did Jonathan Brownlee. And there you can see Leo Berger just having a difficult time without any shoes on. We still don't exactly know why. Richard Murray took the $1,000, and I feel like perhaps he's just talking himself down. In fact, there you go, he crossed the line twice. We're not going to give him 2000 though. Not a chance. Schumann and Brownlee second and third ahead of Wild, Sharp, Schilling, Schomburg. Sharp, Schilling and Schomburg all together. There is Look at that. the shots of Leo Berger's feet. So there's Brad Beer. That hurts. I'm not sure exactly what happened. Just couldn't find his shoes when he needed them. We're going to have a look at the stage results right now. Richard Murray in a tick under 19 minutes. And we'll see exactly how fast stage three is if 19 minutes wins stage two. Ahead of Schumann, Brownlee, Wild, Mislintuck, Sharp, Schilling and Schomburg. Canute and Leo Berger, who we'll hear from right now, he's with Annie. Leo, what was the decision behind wearing no shoes on the run? Uh, I tried to, to, to run with my shoes and uh, it was too slippery. I was uh, losing it uh, while uh, running in the first uh, meters. So I decided to, Just quick shout out to, yeah, to, uh, to give it a go, to, to try Cheryl running uh, barefoot. Barefoot, but like uh, cards, it, so it was the, the best decision uh, at this time to try to qualify for the final. But my, my feet are burning now, uh, I'm, uh, I'm bleeding, so I will do my best for the next uh, leg. We have seen there was quite a lot of blood on the bottom of your feet, but you're deciding to go ahead with the next race. 
Uh, yeah, we'll just give it a go and uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm not confident because uh, I can't even uh, work okay, properly. So I'll okay. try. One more race. Okay. Well, sorry to hear that, Leo. Yeah, that Good luck. Saturday. Okay. One more. All right. It's interesting. It's very much pushing the boundary Super League triathlon and people are looking for any little. Yeah. Well, he opted, advantage they he can. opted to, wear, to take the shoes off because he felt he was slipping too much and now, now he's destroyed his feet. OK, well, we're going to try what we can do to stay up with the front pack here at Super League Trail on Singapore. Maybe a decision he'll look back on and change his mind about as the crowd enjoys a fantastic racing here. And it's been a great week for all of our athletes here in Singapore. We've really put it on Singapore for Super League Triathlon. And in fact, if you can believe this, earlier in the week, they caught up with none other than basketball's Harlem Globetrotters. How you doing? I'm Dragon. And I'm Ice. We're the world famous Harlem Globetrotters. We're here in Singapore about to have some fun. One of my favorite countries in the world. We're going to be showing tricks to the amazing Super League Triathlon athletes. It's going to be a lot of fun. I heard they're pretty talented, so I can't wait. Today we're going to be taught some awesome basketball tricks. Yeah, we're a bit scared of uh, doing it today. <laughs> I think I'm just going to try and rely on my, my Philippine basketball skills, honestly, to get me through this. It's, it's going to be a coordination test, which we don't do a lot of with triathlon. Yeah, I'll double tap that one for sure. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Good. Pleasure to be here. To Pleasure to be here. Hey. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, so we had to practice the spin trick a bit. Everybody like that, yeah. Easy, look at that. She got the skills. Oh, there you go. Okay, so we have this thing called the three-man weave. It's a... Uh, uh-huh, just like that. And then, we, and then we get faster. And after a while, it starts to go fast like this here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did amazing. You know, we did a magic circle where we do some of our tricks, certain things with spinning the ball and uh, bringing it around our body. And I guess we just got a sample of what they actually do, uh, which was pretty cool. So oh, yeah, I thought it would be uh, tricky to try and do two things at once, so I was trying to do a track stand on the bike and shoot, but uh, I didn't realize your focus goes away from what you're doing when you try and shoot, so it was really challenging, but uh, almost managed to get it, which was, was good fun and a first for me. That might be the new thing, you know, open bike run and, and throw, that, that's a good combo. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm retiring from basketball as of today, uh, but uh, it's, been, it's been a good career so far, I've enjoyed it. Brand new BMC, just into New Deal, into the water in the harbour here in Singapore. Now, Leo Berger, you just saw his feet. It looks like he's going to start this one, will but continue? will he continue? That's yeah. the question. His feet are destroyed. You saw Brad Beer working on them, but it surprised me that he opted to take those shoes to get himself in the final. I guess even if he doesn't finish, he's in 10th. So it's better than being eliminated in the last event. So it's a strategic move. It'll be interesting to see if he can get through. You can see him looking at his feet there. But... This is a man who's sitting in sixth position overall in the championship yeah. and could be as high as you know fourth or third if he goes on and if he has a, a good finish here. So that really was a big, big decision from Leo Berger, obviously, in the moment he was slipping. But it gives a free pass to someone like a Ben Canute who has just 10 points adrift at the moment. But an explainer of the Eliminator. Stage one, two and three. Three triathlons, one lap in the swim, five laps on the bike, two laps on the run. We lose from our 23 athletes, eight after the first stage, a 10 minute break. The top 15 go through, and then the top 10 go through into stage three. And this is stage three, it is all on the line, and Richard Murray's fallen he, into the water early. If he's false started, he's gonna be held back, he's gonna be last out and get a five second penalty at the end. Did he go in early? He I went in that. early, I think. Oof. That's a costly false start. A very, very costly false start. So the Eliminator keeps throwing up different situations. Let's have a look. Oh, he's just lost his balance and slipped. Ooh. And that looks to me like a false start. It's a false start. He's saying? in the water. He's been punished because he didn't get to dive. So he's already last. So that's going to be very, very difficult. And again, Henry Skoom in our blue jersey, straight to the front. He's so much quicker when there's less athletes in the water because all those gaps aren't filled. On the oh, Leo Bergier's out. All right, so there he's just go. jumped in the water, taking his 10th position. And Richard Murray, we have a scoring system here based on some pretty technical stuff to give them a score out of 10 against their peers for swim, bike and run and transitions. And Richard Murray has an 8.9 on the bike, an 8.2 on the run, both great scores. 
and a 6.1 on the swim, which is nowhere near anyone around him. Aiden Wild also down on the swim with a 5.6. So already he's not the greatest swimmer. I'm trying to see who that, that on the far right of the, of the screen here. It looked like Aiden Wild, but I can't quite see, which would be brave for an athlete who's not renowned for a big swim. As I, I said, yeah, 5.6 yeah. on the swim is one of the lower swim scores from always, our top guys. Or is it Schomburg? It could be Schomburg. I think it is. I think it is Schomburg, yeah, actually. It it's Schomburg, which makes a lot more sense. He's a strong swimmer. You need to be a strong swimmer to have the confidence to move away from the pack and swim in clear water. Henry Schoon have a Lee, great bent angle move. around that. Boy, but Johnny there Brown in the red jersey there. Schoeman's just looking like he's out for a leisurely Sunday swim. Murray on Wild's feet. Who's that at the back? Can't quite see. Yeah, difficult to see from that camera angle, but we do know that Henry Schumann, who's occasionally been so far out in a swim in a race that he's had to stop and have a look that he's going the right way. Well, it's fast. It's, it's strung out single file, and you see Jonathan Brownlee he's sitting in fifth. There's a small gap that's opened up. Henry's laying it down here. When it goes single file like that, and they go straight to the feet, the pace is on. It's the quickest way to swim. No one's sitting off each other's hips. There's no one bashing each other up. You allow Henry Schumann to let his talent do the work and you just jump on for the ride if you possibly can. But it seems like Johnny Brownlee has lost that the feet of the fourth swimmer just off that last can. He has the capabilities of swimming back on, but these gaps matter, especially in this final. We can confirm that Richard Murray will have a five-second penalty when he jumps onto the bike, so that will hurt his chances as well. Richard Murray, of course, third overall in the championship on 48 points behind Schumann on 63, led by Vincent Lewis, who, if you're just joining us, had a flat tyre and was knocked out in the opening stage. So Johnny Brownlee, just two points behind Richard Murray, will be very much hoping to reverse that third and fourth positions this as we head into tomorrow and the final round of Super League. So Schumann slipping out of the water. Canute comes second. He has a big slip. And that therefore, Somberg overtakes him. He's all right, though. Mizlachuk out in fourth again. Sharp out in fifth again. Brownlee in sixth. Hayden Wild in seventh. Here comes Richard Murray. He's going to be held up in just a second. And Schilling on the back. Andreas Schilling so in Murray's, tenth position. Murray's already giving up some gap with the five-second penalty. He's shut himself out of this event. And I'm interested to see right where Jonathan Brownlee is because what we're watching is a race now between Jonathan Brownlee and Henry Skewman. That's what Vincent Louis will be watching, those two athletes in particular, and where they finish. Yeah, not just because obviously there's great athletes all around them, but they're the ones with championship aspirations, there's no doubt. Murray waits. Still he waits. Two, one, off he goes. So that is going to leave him with a lot of work to do. Jonathan Brownlee back in seventh position, 11 seconds off our leader, Henry Schumann, Andreas Silling in eighth, and now Murray goes through the timing map, 26 seconds back on Schumann. Schumann has a look around, he has daylight between him and Ben Canute, a train of four. Here's Lechuk in there as well. And there's Johnny just off the back of Matt Sharp. He needs to close that gap to Ben Canute. Ben Canute will put his head down and chase and chase and chase until he gets onto the back of Henry Schumann. And Johnny Brownlee's in a bit of danger here. He has to move up in this lap. He, he has to. to. He's very animated. He needs to get himself around Matt Sharp. All 300,000 centimetres of Matt Sharp. Not sure how tall he is. He's up there near the two metre mark though. You just don't want to be in the group chasing down Ben Canute. You know he's going to, as you can see right there, he puts his head down, he puts in a, slams it into a big gear and works and works and works. Just, if you're in the group, you know you're going to get a free ride, but Johnny Brownlee would be cursing the fact that Ben Canute is in front of him. Brownlee is around sharp, Schilling, and Murray has managed to get onto the tail. So he's made five seconds up already to get onto the tail of Andreas Schilling. But Henry Schumann, he doesn't want to leave anything to chance as he comes around. Through transition for the first time. The crowd has built across the course of the day as the temperature has gone down a little bit here in Sentosa Cove. He's on. He's on. Great, great first lap. A committed first lap. He's put his head down and goes straight on the back of that group. Henry Schumann, second in the championship. Looking to send it to an incredible day two here in Singapore.
100,000 US dollars on the line for the championship winner. 20,000 for the round winner, and Henry Schumann wants both. He's sensing blood in Vince Louis disappearance from this eliminator and he's smelling the money at the end of it and the title of Super League champion as well. Hayden Wilde's the one who's going to chase. We know he's technically very, very astute on the bike coming from the Xterra off-road background. He's been the standout as we said earlier at the series and I do think he believes he can beat these guys and win a round of Super League. Could this be it? You just saw him saying come with me there to Tyler Mislachuk. Go around me, help me out. There's discussion. They need to work together, Mislachuk and Wild now, because Knut's just a little bit back. He comes back up on Schomburg, Brownlee, Sharp. So, can they work together to bring themselves up to Henry Schumann? The fact that Johnny's not chasing says two things to me. He's either resting up from the chase to get onto that group, or he believes there's enough horsepower within the next two laps, and there's enough momentum and commitment from this group that they're going to close that gap to Henry Schumann because Johnny knows there's a lot on the line. Schumann is very, very comfortable out front and I think he's sitting back there feeling, OK, I'm watching what's happening. I think they're going to move across. They can close this. I saved my legs and I've got a running race. The gap currently four seconds. We'll keep an eye on that. Now Six top. men looking to chase down. Mislachuk now on the front. Wild tucked in behind and Brownlee's moved up a couple of spots. There's the gap as they come down the backside of the course on the inside here on the pavers before they make the S bend, the Singapore chicane, and out onto the road to loop back around. Schumann the first through the chicane. There he goes. Cannot believe we haven't had more people come to grief here, but that just shows you the skill of our athletes. Schomburg now heading up. Sharp's had a great position. day, hasn't he? he has. Really, really strong day. One of his best performances of the league. If you're going to have a big day, grand final day's the day to have it. Exactly he's been right. Right, right there or thereabouts in both swim, in the swim and in particular in the run where he's tended to struggle in other series. So he's coming into this season in magnificent form. And look behind from Schumann. Johnny Brown is now second wheel. He's starting to sense a little bit of urgency. That gap's not coming back as quickly as he possibly would like. He'll, I'm sure he'll give... Hayden Wild, a little bit of encouragement. We work on the inexperience of Wild. Push, push, push. Close that gap, and he may jump across. Just a reminder: if Henry Schumann wins this race and goes on to win the Enduro tomorrow, here the final day of Super League season 2018-19. The title and the $100,000 on offer is almost certainly his. Nine minutes into this final stage, two laps to go on the bike. And here comes Johnny. And that's exactly right. Johnny Brownlee is closing that gap. They've taken two seconds out of Schumann on that last lap. And the question is now, they've shared the work, the train behind Schumann. What's left in Henry Schumann's legs if it comes down to a running race with Johnny Brownlee? The Commonwealth Games gold medalist and Rio bronze medalist up against the London bronze medalist and Rio silver medalist. Yeah. Is that right? Geez, they've got some titles between them. Wow. At, uh, at major games, major championships, those, those two are near at the front or near to the front in every single one. And here we are again in the Eliminator in Sentosa Cove in Singapore. And it's all going to come down to a massive run. So, in our Super League scoring system, out of 10, Henry Schumann has an 8.7 run. Jonathan Brownlee has an 8.3 run. Ooh. But Henry Schumann has done more work on the bike, you'd think. The gap has now closed completely, and sitting on the wheel is Johnny Brownlee. Don't forget, behind them is five men who know how to win races as well. Yeah. Henry in the blue because he's the swim leader. Johnny in the red because he's the run leader having had the fastest run splits in Majorca. One lap to go on the bike. They cross the dismount line. For the last time on the bike, Knuts dropped down back with Schomburg and Sharp. I think those boys there are counting heads. I, I think right now there's a group up front and I, I see Hayden Wild really believing he can mix it with these two. Ben Canute now takes Canute's the lead, gone, so he's gone up 
six places. Tyler missed the chocker back himself here as well. He's been running well. He's been this cl as close or this close to the front many times. He won one of the... Well, he just got out sprinted by Hayden Wilde and Malta. He likes his shorter, aggressive formats. He's been very, very calm through the first two stages. He's done minimal work, did one lap here on the bike. His legs will be fresh. This is shaping up for a great running race. We'll see who's got the legs on day one. It's the Singapore Super League Triathlon Grand Final. All roads have led to this. Very early on in the 2019 season, but the culmination of our Super League season and what a race this is turning out to be. Ben Canute on the front. Johnny Brownlee tucked in behind and now Schumann gets a chance to just tuck in behind the larger frame of Brownlee and think about the fact he's got 1,800 metres on the run to win this one. Henry's Wild very, now comes up. And Henry's very, very slick in transition. I'm surprised he's drifted back to third wheel. He's watching Johnny Brownlee. Hayden Wild on the outside, trying to get in fast. And look at that, Henry Schumann slid up, getting to transition first and out. Seconds mount, seconds count, and Johnny Brownlee is now sixth wheel. Look at that. Now quickly things can wow. change. Again, Hayden Wild as he did off the bike in stage two. Leads into transition for the final leg. A group of very high quality triathletes, the best you'll find. Wild's bike has come out of its mount. We'll have to put that back in. Schomburg first out. Henry's beaten Johnny out. Tough transition for Ben Canute. And Richard Murray's had a magnificent bike ride. We lose that five seconds. We last out the water, five seconds lost, and still be there. We know his transition's good. We know his run's good. Fantastic transition. And it's going to have to be absolutely superb. Schumann leads from Hayden Wild. Henry Schumann, 27 years of age. Hayden Wild gives away so many years in terms of experience. He's just 21. Schomburg. Brownlee, Sharp, Mislachuk, Canute, who had a tough transition. And he's going to have to work his way back. But the run on Henry Schumann, we've seen him in 2018 lead all three legs and win. He did it in Abu Dhabi, just the second ever in WTS racing to lead wire to wire. Of course, a win on the Gold Coast to start off his 2018 in the Commonwealth Games. See how, we'll see how good Johnny's feeling right now. He's got a little gap. If he closes it in this first loop, I think he's going to back himself. He looks more comfortable than he has in, in some of the previous league races. He's run straight on the back of them. And I think he would back himself. I do think he'd back himself with a long run out against Henry Schumann. I, it, it'll be very, very interesting. We've yet to see it. It's usually been a Vincent Louis Henry Schumann show with Johnny being out the back or missing a group. Now it's going to come down to this. There's the World Duathlon champ, Andreas Schilling, from 2018. Had some great results in 2018, fifth in Montreal in the WTS. Led a breakaway there, and he's been there or thereabouts. Tyler all five through Poznan to get here. Tyler Mislachuk, four of them. That's Matt Sharp sitting in fifth. The gap's starting to open to him. Schomburg's out. He these could four. probably pick your winner from these four. I don't, I don't hate... Uh, I, I don't looks know. Good. Wild looks I, I good. I can't pick him. You might. No, I've got I'm no idea. Pull it. We've still got a lap to go. Absolutely no idea who's going to win this one. Hey. I liked Hayden Wild. He's had more race experience from 2019. Some of these guys coming in on fresh legs. We know Richard Murray, for example, hasn't had a, a race yet. Hayden's had a couple back in New Zealand, and they've been very, very good. Will that hold him in good stead as he tries to hold off Olympic and Commonwealth Games medalists right behind him? He's in exalted company, Hayden Wild. And let's face it, in a bunch sprint, in a sprint finish in Super League racing, he's yet to be beaten. He it's might true. have been sprinting for the win, but he's outkicked Johnny Brown. He's outkicked Mario Mola. He's outkicked. He's outkicked Tyler Mislachok. So he's yet to do it for a run of the win because it's usually been shut down by Vincent Lewis. But right now, this could be the biggest win of his career if he could shut out the current Commonwealth Games gold medalist and both of them in Johnny Brownlee and, and Henry Schumann in the blue jersey there with Olympic medals. Well, Henry Schumann's got enough composure to reach for the water bottle. But he, he looks comfortable. Oh, Mr. the chop. We get to see Tyler this close to the front. He will get more and more confident. He looks very comfortable too. He does. Johnny also looks comfortable. The only one who's showing the stress of it, I suppose, at the front there is Hayden Wild. 
So, Skoom and Wild Brantley and Mislachuk. Also, Sharp's tacked on there as well. He hasn't been broken yet. So, another big boost for Matt Sharp, whose partner, Kirsten Casper, is watching on at home. And no doubt enjoying this showdown. She's second overall in the women's standings. Unfortunately, not here. But she'll be loving the work done by the Canadian Matt Sharp. Johnny Brantley's having a long run at it from home. A long, long way out. And Henry Skooman has slid back to fourth does not look comfortable and this all plays well for Vincent Louis. Vincent Lewis if he can keep Henry Skooman in fourth here and Johnny looks fantastic and, and Johnny Brownlee can win this championship and he's running like he knows that. Take a subject, take third from Richard Murray if he wins this one going into tomorrow but right now Mislachuk's the only one staying. This reminds me very much of Jersey the similar thing happened and it was Vince Lewis who kicked and dropped Henry Skooman, who attacked early, but this time it's Brownlee attacking early. Mislachuk goes with him. A little gap back now to Skooman. It looks like Sharp will run to a very creditable fifth, but the, it's really on at the front now between Johnny Brownlee and Tyler Mislachuk. Wow, Tyler Mislachuk. And he is sticking to Johnny Brownlee. And the famous kick of the Olympic champion from Sydney, Simon Whitfield, who invented the kick out of Canada, used to run exactly like this off the shoulder of the leader and just decimate with a kick and it looks very very familiar Tyler Mislachok to me has a very similar running style to Simon Whitfield this will no doubt wow. be the biggest moment of Tyler Mislachok's career if he manages to out sprint Johnny Brownlee who looks in excellent form he's had worries training in Yorkshire about the heat but it certainly seems to not have worried him Schoeman has managed to move himself into third position which is going to be very important in terms of the points race we can talk about that in the wash up as he overtakes Hayden Wild who's trying to stick with him and, and Hayden Wild's important. a very slight guy it just shows you exactly how finely cut Henry Schoeman is but right now it's Brownlee who finds another gear again and it looks like Mislachuk's not going to be able to quite go with him and instead it is going to be Jonathan Brownlee He's not racing Abu Dhabi in a couple of weeks. He's been focused on this one. He had the toughest career year so far. He's and he's a championship contender, and he's going to announce himself championship-wise. It's a big, big win for Jonathan Brownlee, who can sense potentially a championship win. So animated, Johnny Brownlee wins from Tyler Mislachuk, who gave everything. Hayden Wild has been Henry Schoeman. He has, so that throws things further into disarray. Schoeman can't do the job. Wow. He had one hand on the championship. Matt Sharp very happy with fifth. And Ben Canute holds off Jonas Schomburg for sixth. But the ramifications of that race... Johnny Brownlee oh, is back. Back in he a big is way. Back. 2018 was a horror for Johnny Brownlee. But he starts 29 in with a bang. Let's hear from him right now. Johnny, you have just made a lot of British fans back home very happy. How does that feel? Oh, it's about time. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've won a race, so it's about time. It feels good. It was hard work. I made it hard for myself early in the, in the rounds by making stupid mistakes. But, yeah, and at the end, everyone got tired quicker than I did. So uh, I don't think anyone's fresh at the end. But, yeah, so happy to win again. It's been a long time. We're really happy too. Listen, after the first race, you said, I'm tired, I'm just warming into it. You certainly did. You may feel tired, but you look great now. I've finally been able to do some training. Uh, I finally got like six, seven weeks in, and you know, it makes a difference. And uh, no, I enjoyed that. It was hard, hard racing. And when I kicked, I thought, oh, well, oh, I just wanted one guy left. And I kicked again, and I thought, oh, I'm on my own. This is good. I've not had this for a long time. But no, I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, it was hot, it was hard. And, I can race in the heat. <laughs> You've done yourself a whole lot of good in terms of moving up the rankings. What are your thoughts ahead quickly of the race tomorrow? Oh, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow. I don't really care at the moment. I'm happy uh, to win that race. And the uh, show's got the form, so I'll come back. Uh, tomorrow, sure, I think uh, Vince is going to get to beat tomorrow. He's going to be angry. He's going to be fresh. But uh, I'm as pleased to find a win tomorrow. Okay, great stuff. We're very happy for you, Johnny. Well done. Thank you. Johnny Brownlee with a famous victory and look how much it means to him. It's been a long, long time since he's had a win by his own admission. He's had injury problems. He's had 
stomach problems uh, kept him out of races and now he gets a win to open 2019. 2018 is in the rearview mirror for Johnny Brownlee. Congratulations to him, Richard Murray. Did admirably well considering just how tough it has been for him with his ankle, etc. Jonathan Brownlee wins. 15 seconds quicker than stage two it was. Tyler Mislachuk with a great, great effort to finish three seconds back. Hayden Wild eight seconds back. Schumann, who every chance he's going to win the title tomorrow. He finishes fourth. Matt Sharp, Ben Canute, Jonas Schomburg, Andreas Schilling, and Richard Murray rounds out our top nine. And that was a fantastic race in the Eliminator. Let's have a look back at stage three. Richard Murray went into the water early. He got a five second penalty for that. He also didn't get the chance to dive in. Leo Berger finishes 10th. He got in the water, but his feet were all cut up, so he didn't race. Plenty of slipping as they came up into transition. Henry Schumann looked very comfortable early on, but he was made to do a lot of work out there on his own, as it is a little bit blustery here as well, and it showed in the end. He got caught up with a lap or so to go, and Johnny Brownlee hit the front of the bike. Ben Canute made his move to the front. He'd have a tough transition and he'd never really make it back from there. The run pace was strong. And in the end, Johnny Brownlee found a kick halfway through to drop everyone but Tyler Mislachuk and a kick down the back straight to do the same on Tyler, which was a great effort in the end from the Canadian. But no one could beat Johnny Brownlee. We'll go back down to Annie. Well, Richard, we've seen it all today, but that was a first, a full start in the swim. Tell us what happened. Yeah, I thought let's do a two feet dive here, like I usually do, but the starting part was wet. And as I leaned forwards, they were holding us so long and my feet slipped before I could actually push. And as I slipped the gun, I thought, oh no, that's a false start and I'm behind as well. So it was already tough. The last one was a real mess up, but uh, yeah, I thought on the bike, I should just keep pushing. Maybe we catch, but we didn't catch on the run, I just couldn't push because of my calf a little bit, so yeah, it was a, it was a pity. <laughs> How did you keep the focus on the swim? Because, you know, you're an experienced athlete, you must have known it was highly likely you were going to pick up a penalty. Yeah, um, I actually didn't think I had a penalty because I think I slipped and fell in as the hoot went off, so I think I moved off the pontoon like a second early. But uh, yeah, it's sports, these things happen, and uh, all you can do is obviously pick yourself up and... Uh, I wasn't last out the water, so that was good. With a, <laughs> almost last, but uh, yeah, it was it was alright. I'm I'm, it's, I'm I'm okay with it. You've kind of not done yourself a lot of favours there in terms of the old overall series in that last race. You're gonna have to work very hard tomorrow to pull yourself back. Yeah, um, I'm actually kind of pleased with how it went today. Um, I mean, I've been running for about eight days this year, um, so I can only expect so much from myself. And uh, I thought if I made it into the final round, I'd be happy with it. And then when we got in, I thought, oh, maybe I can come top five or top three here and uh, kind of screw it up at the start. But uh, there's sport and sometimes these things happen. It is indeed sport. Well, well done. Anyway, we look forward to watching you racing tomorrow, Richard. Thanks. Cheers to the guys who did it so well today. It was, was tough out there. <laughs> Let's have another look at the false start. The two-footed dive. And as you said, they were held and he slipped off the edge. It was wet after so many podium uh, pontoon starts and uh, that's all it takes. He says that's sport, but it happened to three of our top six. So coming into this one, Vincent Lewis was on 75 points from Schumann 54, Murray 40 and Brownlee 38. You can see in the yellow there on the right exactly how many points this weekend is worth. Now Schumann, if he can win the weekend and hope Lewis finishes third or below, he's the champ. Brownlee and Murray can also be champion. Now Murray, well, he's it's been hurt for him after what we just heard about, but Johnny Brownlee has given himself a bigger chance. So they call it sport, Macca, but it happened to three of our top six. Leo Berger cut his feet, couldn't start in stage three. Richard Murray false started and that cruelled his chances and we know what happened to Vincent Lewis. It might be sport, but it is definitely Super League triathlon. You wouldn't have scripted it. Had, you know, before the start, we finished watching the women's race. Had I said that any of that, one of those three things that happened, we would have said it's not possible, but it's thrown things wide open for the Enduro tomorrow. That, that format is brutal. It's very, very difficult. I'm thinking Vincent Lewis will finish 17th today where he was eliminated, which means there's only a 13-point difference between today's points. Anything can happen tomorrow, but this man on screen right there, Jonathan Brownlee, is magnificent to see him back in form. He's got the Tokyo. We're about, what, 15 months out before the Tokyo Olympics, and uh, to find form in a matter to see him win. You saw how much it meant to him. It was magnificent.
Yeah, more people have asked me where is Johnny Brownlee in terms of fans yeah. than anything else across the course of this week. He's loved down here in Singapore and across the world, of course. Two-time world sprint try champion, two-time Olympic medalist, Rio Silver and a bronze in London, 2012 world champion, a couple of WTS podiums in 2017. His best was fourth in 2018 in Hamburg, fifth in Edmonton. A lot of injuries and stomach problems, as I mentioned. Com games, he finished seventh. He didn't look comfortable there. He just had a really tough year in 2018. But that is all behind him now with a big win. And this is how it shook out. I thought Tyler missed the chop was still half a chance here. He looked to be tracking Johnny well. Johnny was very well committed. And the gap sort of opened up just as they came off this corner. I saw Hayden Wild right there mapping. You watch Stuben sort of look back and smile there. I thought, oh, yeah, sure. and then Brownlee went. Yeah, he really did. I don't know whether Henry knew that he didn't have it in him on the second one, but that is a kick for the ages. That's a Vincent Lewis kick, that one. He knew he wanted it, and he knew he only had one man left to beat. You saw him there. He kicked halfway through the last lap. And he had another one in him, and Tyler couldn't It was couldn't a year's frustration. A year's I'm worth clear, of frustration. I'm you see it, his face lit up. I got goosebumps as I saw it. You saw what it meant to him. There was no way Tyler Mislachok was getting past him. Look you don't that. often see that kind of animation from Johnny Brownlee. And it is so good to see it. He's so loved in the triathlon world. And how good is a finish for that? We've got to give credit to Tyler. Mr. Chock had, had it not been Johnny Brownlee right now and Vincent Louis had won this event and we saw Tyler Mr. Chock finish second, he'd be the talk of today's racing. It was amazing event. He, he, he stayed right there and when it mattered in stage three, he's two seconds from the win. Oh, I'm just watching Johnny Brownlee. Sorry, I can't help myself. It's so good to watch it. But it is good. Tyler Mislachuk, he's been so good. As Super League's gone on, he's gotten better. Without question. Without, Without question. He's, he's really matured in the racing. His transitions are tidy. His coach, Jonathan Hall, has brought all his team here, and uh, they're very, very focused on, on refining their skill for Super League racing. So, three of our top six have had tough days. Three have had great days. We'll set it all up for tomorrow. We're going to head down to the From podium in just a second. In fact, we're going to do it right now the as today, Mr. we Hayden head Wild. to our podium and Hayden Wild in third. Taking the silver medal from Canada, Tyler Misselchuk. Gold medals, United Kingdom, Jonathan Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to now to call Von Chandram to come velvet with the champagne to present, as he does very well. There's had practice at this one. The Maltese Falcon, and of course, shout out from Malta. Mitchell Chuck, he launched today. But I tell you what we say here here's Johnny, Singapore. You don't often see man hugs uh, on a podium, but it's there you go. From Holter. Yep. And Hayden Wall pops it first. A little bit more trouble for the other two. But a great job from Johnny Brownlee. He gets champagne in the eye. It doesn't matter. Tyler Mislachuk takes second and Hayden Wall third. And that was a very Super League triathlon podium, that one. There was a few things you don't usually yeah. see. There's some Tomorrow, happy boys, very, very happy AM. boys. And as we said, as, we, as they cross, this is the first time. Coming into the grand final, Four we've had them in a magnificent season. But it's the first time Henry Skewman and Vincent Louis have both not been on a podium. It's it's any stage. So both of them have taken a spot right. on the podium at each and every race. Yes, exactly. Sunday. And that just Make shows sure you how here. quickly things can turn. Any slight error, any slight piece of misfortune and you can just see how much it means to Johnny Brownlee to start off Super his 2019 Super with a win. This is Super Sick. The best part about Super League Triathlon is it doesn't end there. Tomorrow we up the pace even more and we bring you the Enduro. It is a brutal format. 
nine legs, eight transitions, one long race and everything on the line. The last race of the season. Check your local guides, as always, for the times wherever you are around the world as Super League beams out to over one billion homes. Really taking triathlon to the next level, and they're all watching Johnny Brownlee enjoy this one. Maka, there's a massive, well, there's a massive English expat community here in Singapore, and uh, when we came here, everybody talked about the Brownleys. All right, there we go, Maka. Thanks very much. We hope you enjoyed the men's eliminator. We'll be back tomorrow with the enduro for the men and women, and to crown our Super League champions. But it's bye for now. Johnny, you have.